everybody welcome to directly to you it's our podcast the freaking 98th episode of our podcast 99th i did it i messed it up Brent. Brent. just talked about this. i know it always happens like, to me. at least it doesn't have an eight in it so i'm not gonna get confused yeah, right and that put eight in and my it, mind it yeah. messed me up man it messed it, me up. uh it's anyway, 99 the number without eight in it the part that i never get wrong is i'm aj and I'm That's joined true. by Parker. That's very true. Hi, hello. How are you? Hello. Doing, doing great. Um, but apart from that, you know, I mentioned that it's our podcast we're fanatics for, mm-hmm. and we have a channel that needs to be upkept because time isn't free, turns out. Um, you can help support that by going to youtube.com slash fanatics4 or twitch.tv slash fanatics4 and paying $4.99. What may you get for that? You may ask yourself and me and Parker. You get exclusive emotes. (laughs) You get loyalty badges. You get free switch keys from time to time. You get access to our support. There's only Discord where the the freaking perks are just stacking up man they're just increasing and increasing we do weekly chats and we play games and stuff i was playing smash brothers we're going to get to that in the q a segment um yeah man also you could just join our discord and hang out for free also linked in the description but other than that we can get to the show and Mm -hmm. talk about the video games that we're playing Good old Vidge games. Uh, I'm I'm just gonna skip straight ahead. I'm I'm still going strong on Divinity Original Sin. It's great. Uh, tonight though, I'm hanging out. I know it's. You've, I'm sure you've noticed. I know. Yeah, because yeah, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, yep, Parker's playing Divinity. It's the same thing. I, now it's the Smash uh-huh. Brothers thing. Because yeah. literally, whenever and I see it, because Bob, every time mm-hmm. Bob's streaming and I turn on Smash Brothers, he's like, "Hey, he's playing Smash Brothers." <laughs> <laughs> But like he always calls it out. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's what I'm noticing happens with you when you play the video original sin. If I'm on, mm-hmm. even if I'm not playing it, like I'll turn it on to like check on like a eShop price or something. Yeah, that makes sense. And I'm like, oh, Parker's playing the video original sin. <laughs> it's um, it's funny. I was telling Mitch, and then I think I said the same thing like Duncan or something in the Discord, but like I keep telling myself I don't have to hundred percent it, and then I keep playing as if i'm trying to 100 it like yeah i'm i'm at the point where i could i i'm pretty sure start on the final section or whatever but i'm like oh but these other things like what were those things i don't know i didn't fight them because they were too strong back then i'm gonna go and try to fight them now and then i did and then uh, things and yeah so but no playing that and then um tonight i'm gonna be hanging out with mitch and my friend nate and we're gonna play some games. I don't know what. Probably some Smash. Um, the, maybe yeah. some Killer Queen Black because I got that for Christmas and have played very, 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 very little of it. So, yeah, should be a fun time. I played that once in my life. And mm-hmm. It was in PAX. Nice. Before it came out. Yeah. I don't remember anything. I think it's one of those games I... <sighs> I, like there's some games where it, you have to be a little bit competitive for it to be fun. Um, mm-hmm. And that's probably one of them. So like the only other time that I played it, Mitch and I played and it was just the two of us. And it was like, it's kind of like overcooked in that sense. I mean, it's a very different game style, but like if you're playing overcooked and you're like, Oh yeah, just do that thing over there. Okay. Oh, you missed it. Ah, no big deal. There's like, it's kind of yeah. not fun. And then there, and then <laughs> there's people like me. that's like, no, we got to get three stars. We're doing it again. <laughs> yeah. And like, that's part of the fun somehow. Like, I don't know why toxicity is rewarded in there, but it's like, I mean, it's not that's quite toxic. toxic. That's not it's, toxic. No, it's not toxic. But like, you it know, it can a, be toxic. It can very well <laughs> easily become toxic. Yeah. If you're so getting a divorce over <laughs> spouse not being good at overcook. It can it can go there. It that's true. So <laughs> I'm I'm curious how that'll go. Yeah, again, because when Mitch and I played uh, Killer Queen Black, it was like. I was like, oh, guess we what? lost guess again what? against the computers, but we'll see how this one goes. I forgot to do the gallery review, and now we're here. How long? Hey! We'll you know, I, at the same time. <laughs> I thought of asking you at the beginning. I was like, he's probably got it this time. Nah, man. Lies. My, Lies. my, my, my brain's all over the place right now. Mm-hmm. I'm stressing out. I got to wake up at freaking like 7 o'clock tomorrow. It's not going to be great. No. It's not going to be great. But you can um, get some pizza or whatever people get in. New York. Whatever yeah. people get in New York. Oh, yeah, I'm going to New York, BT Dubs. I'm currently, if you're listening to this when it goes up, I'm currently in New York. 
Oh, currently time travel. But that's it for me. What about you? I'm just playing Smash. Cool. I'm trying to think if I played literally anything else this week, and I didn't even necessarily play Smash a whole lot. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just once Byleth came out. Yeah, I didn't even play uh, like last week. I realized how fast that went by with the whole Kakarot <laughs> thing. But like oh, last yeah, week, I was wow. freaking playing that, and I got all the way to the end, and I was just like, "Yeah, I think I'm done with this game." <laughs> like I just, I, I think I'm done. Uh, and that kind of happened with. I mean, even though like I finished Breath of the Wild, but that's how I felt about. Mm. I ended Breath of the Wild, where it's like, I feel like I did everything that's interesting to me in this game, so mm-hmm. I'm just done. It wasn't like a definitive, like, like okay, I'm going to work up to this point, and I'm finished. Right. It was, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, this isn't fun anymore, I'm done. <laughs> that <laughs> was, that's kind of what, what's happening with uh, Kakarot. But when I, I was a kid, that was sort of like the way that I approached a lot of things, too. Um, so really, you're being childish. No, but... Uh, <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, in a weird way, yes and no. Right. I mean, it's time sensitive, which yeah, is adulting, yeah, you know. Exactly. Because yeah. partially it's like, is this a good use of my time? <laughs> That's so I remember. Yeah, I might have told this on the podcast before, but I don't think so. And I don't remember when I played Super Mario World. Well, Super Mario Advance, whatever. Uh, Super Mario on the Game Boy Advance. I played it like nonstop a lot and then got to bowser's castle fought bowser one time i lost and i was like ah, i mean i've seen everything I'm mario good. just loses <laughs> in this universe and, he so, just lost, and like i had no qualms with just giving up on bowser because i was like i've seen everything there's to see i got the <laughs> idea we're good like i just i don't want to have to go bother to do like a specific boss fight or whatever like you know, we get it. We're good. <laughs> we, so. <laughs> the princess probably gives him a cake or a kiss on the nose or something. We get it. It's yeah, I might as well. So, yeah, so you're not going to finish Kakarot. Fun times. I, I mean, I kind of want to, but, like, I kind of don't. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, no, the act of playing it is kind of what I don't want to do. <laughs> but I, I want to be able to be like, I finished it. You know, it's it yeah. just so I can say that I finished something on PlayStation this year <laughs> specifically. I mean, you've got like 12 more months. That's so true. That's you got gobs true. of time. Maybe yeah. you'll finish. I don't know. You could pick up like a tiny little indie game and be like, finish that. Nah, because then there's no reason to play that. Like yeah. if I'm going to play like, like what indie game that's worth my time is yeah. on PlayStation that's not on Switch. So like, exactly. For the audio listeners, I shrugged very yes, hard. Yes, he did. A, a strong shrug. It is funny though, like, so we'll uh, move out of the what we're playing section, but it, as I'm thinking about it, like usually on podcasts or whatever, the purpose of the what we're playing thing is like to get to share, like, so that everybody who's listening can get to find out about these games that they're missing out mm-hmm. on, but like, Mm. Yeah, for us, it's like the same ones. Over for and over, us, it's so. a mixture of like that when it's a new game. Yeah, but also you know, like get to know, <laughs> catch up. No. Yeah, yeah. Like, let us know what you're playing, even if it's the same game uh, you true. play every day, all day. Yep. And there you go. Um, but yeah, we got we got a bunch of new stuff this week. Surprising. I feel like everything kind of hit all well, at once. Technically. I don't think that's in here because I kind of talked about. Well, we'll talk about it more later. Never mind. I was going yeah, to talk actually, about I didn't Violet, put... but we'll wait. We'll wait until Q and A because there's a question about okay, Violet cool. in here. Sounds and good. I already talked about Violet. <laughs> I won't there a lot, but yeah. I'll do it. Yeah, I didn't put a news article because it feels like so long ago now. I guess. Yeah, it but, does. Um, but whatever. We'll get to it when we get to it. But yeah, the first kind of main thing is uh, not. To- Nintendo. Yeah. What is my problem? I think I was thinking financial results, so I started. Nintendo had their Q3 uh, financial results, which is Q4 of the calendar year, but Q3 fiscally. Um, so we learned a bunch of things. Let me open up these. Oh, I could probably share my screen if we want. Yep. Let's do that. Let me open them all up, and then we'll get it going. Um, while I open this up, what were, what were your thoughts on all of this? Uh, well, I'd rather go through it like bit by bit to tell specific thoughts because, like, just generally, I mean, they continue to kill it. I'm yeah. not surprised. Some people are, uh, surprisingly, that they're like, Oh, they already sold outsold Xbox One, yes. Um, <laughs> oh, they're gonna freaking, oh, they're definitely going to hit 100 million now, yes. <laughs> like, yeah. uh uh-huh. right. Mm-hmm. Can you see my screen? Yes, did I do it? Cool, and so can the people, and also us. Uh, Good job, people and us. Um, sure. Yeah, no, I'm 
it's especially this last holiday. Like I'm, I made a video about it that ahead of the holiday, which was, is this going to be their best holiday ever or yet mm-hmm. or in a while or whatever? And it's, it's strong. It's like, so, close. and I posted something yeah. on Twitter. It was their, um, I think their second best selling, um, hard or er, home console holiday ever. Mm-hmm. So, cause the, we had in 2008, the, we sold like 11.31 million. And then, um, in 2009 it sold 10.41 million. And then the switch sold, um, 10.81 million this past quarter, which that said, it's, it's funny because like we all, I feel like people want to give the caveat of like, Oh, but it's a hybrid system. So it's a home console and a handheld which is true, but yeah. also like we don't, and you know, the fact that it has the switch light as well, but like we don't discount the PS4 plus the PS4 pro or the right. DS plus the DS. And also plus the DS5, like plus, just you know, as kind of much, stuff. just as much as that's an advantage, it's a disadvantage because mm. most, well, not a lot of people look at the switch and to them, it's one or the other. Right. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's a hard sell to go to your parent and say, Hey, I want the new game boy It's $300, <laughs> you yeah. know, <laughs> or on the other end, Hey, I want this new console. It's not nearly as po- uh, powerful as the consoles that came out, what, six years ago, but Hey, it still costs more, <laughs> yep. you know? So like if you, if you, if your logic is, is that one dimensional, it kind of falls apart if you look at it as one or the other thing. Yeah. But yeah, so we got, so again, they sold 10.81 million switches, which is a heck of a lot. Um, And then going into some games here, here's uh, where the top 10 games are right now. We got Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. All right. So this right here, this is, (laughs) this is, this is, this is bonkers, dude. Yep. (laughs) This is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is the best selling game of the generation. It's a port. Best selling, best selling console exclusive, like on one platform. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, not even just. So I was gonna say exclusive. GTA or whatever. Like, yeah, but that's across all. That's like that's yeah. that's accumulated. I mean, as far as like on one platform, because saying console exclusive exclusive isn't accurate either, because right, it, it's more than that, you know. Yeah. Right. Um. So on one console specifically, it's the most mm-hmm. that is done, you know, yeah. uh, for anything, and it's a port. <laughs> and everybody's argument is that it's like, oh, ports are ports, so they shouldn't cost sixty dollars because mm-hmm. they're ports. And then Nintendo's like, yeah, but we sold twenty two million of this. Why would we not charge sixty dollars? So obviously, when it's people not aren't that mad. It's yeah. not a deterrent. Yeah, and that's literally the only reason why price changes happen. It's because it's a deterrent. It's not because Sony's like, you know what? We want to throw them a bone. They're like, oh, okay, this is $60 and it's not selling as well as we want it to. So Mm -hmm. we're going to drop the price. They're not, I promise you, they're not trying to be your friend. I promise you (laughs) when they do a sale, it's not because they're, you know, they're, they're, uh, being the good guy. It's because Mm -hmm. they want you to buy the game faster than you're buying it. (laughs) Uh, and Nintendo's like, "Eh." you know, we, we sell, we sell. And when we sell it, we get the full profit. Yep, and it works for them to the tune of almost twenty three million, uh, like passive sales of this game that they developed mm-hmm. six years ago. Yeah, man. And so specifically, too, within well, this isn't just within the last quarter, but this is within the last financial year. Um, so since March, no, since April of twenty nineteen, Mario Kart Eight Deluxe sold uh, six. 0.27 million that is insane dude yeah i mean a lot of that too like bundles obviously is a big part of it um but i mean it's just the default game that anybody's probably gonna get right but even know? that right like if somebody's buying a console for a game i know yeah. i know a lot of people like discount bundles in that way mm-hmm. where it's like oh it doesn't count because it counts bundles it's like mm-hmm. yeah but a lot of times when people buy those bundles like Wii sports that's mm-hmm. literally the only game they buy so <laughs> yeah. they didn't buy like oh you know they got a game for free no they spent 250 dollars for one game yeah <laughs> and sometimes too there would be if they didn't want mario kart i can't think i, I don't remember all the specific bundles and stuff or discounts there were at black friday but i'm pretty I sure there the were switch, ones that they the, the switch the only one that 
was like a bundle in yeah. the sense that most people think of it, where it's like the game is free. Right. It's Mario Kart. That's the so only bundle that they've I had. think though there probably were ones, and I could be wrong, where like buy a switch, get a game half off or something like that. So if it just yeah, had to do with something like that. So I mean just as but a that would have been like, like people want specific. Yes, right, exactly. Like so, something the retailers taking the hit on. Like Nintendo's yeah. still making that money. Right. So. The I the main point being that like if somebody really want cared zero about mario kart then they would get one of those bundles yeah. with a switch and half off a of breath of the wild or something like that but then instead people obviously enough people at least were going still for the switch plus mario kart because they wanted mario kart right which is man insane like that's it's crazy pretty <laughs> crazy but yeah so then the next top selling game is super smash brothers ultimate which in the last year has sold where are you at where is it? Oh, here it is. Uh, three point eight seven million um, from again. That's not in the last April. Year. That's the last. Yeah, that's, that's from yeah the April last. to so you know the last the fiscal quarter. year. Yeah, up till then. So the last three quarters, I guess technically, um, which is it's interesting how, how much less quick. I mean, that's obviously still selling mm-hmm. quite quickly and selling well, and like has the DLC and stuff coming out. But again. <laughs> Just the fact that, like, how much of that is uh, compared even just to Mario Kart, you know? Yeah, because a lot of it is front-loaded. And then yeah. they they become more liberal with their with their sales, you know, yeah. where they, they do have more moments with Mario Kart, where it's like, Mario Kart is 25% off. Mm-hmm. They haven't gotten to that point with Smash Brothers. Like, I, yeah. haven't, I haven't seen Smash Brothers on sale at all. No, same. Uh, Mario Kart isn't on sale as much as, like, it's, it's not a permanent on sale sort of like God of War sort of situation. Mm-hmm. But they do have periods of time where they're like, all right, it's 25% off. And that's yep. when a lot of those sales happen, too. Yep. But yeah, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Um, somebody actually did have a question in the Q&A that I can't remember who it was, but we'll get to it later i'll say their name but i'll go ahead and ask the question now do we do you think that smash is ever going to outpace mario kart 8 uh no Uh uh-uh i I think mario kart 8 (laughs) is more approachable Mm -hmm. um i i I think that smash brothers is like a staple in a lot of people's minds in the Mm -hmm. same way but more people are like uh turned off by it where it's mm-hmm. like, I, well, I'm not good at that, or mm-hmm. I'm not going to play that as often, or yep. you know, like that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, Whereas the Ashleys of the world are going to play Mario Kart, but they're not going to play Smash. Right. Like, specifically. Ashley. Exactly. So you're saying <laughs> girls don't play Smash because it's called Super Smash Bros. Uh, so uh, of course, that's canceled. exactly, yeah. Canceled. <laughs> Very much not. Um, yeah, <laughs> next is Super Mario Odyssey, which sold 2.15 million in the last nine months. And is now at, well, there's a thing in the way now. But it's now at uh, 16.59 million. That's crazy. Which is crazy. Uh, and then Breath of the Wild Breath is the like Wild right is behind catching it. Up. It's catching up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, let's see. Breath of the Wild sold, yeah, quite a bit more. It sold 1.5 million more, more or less, than Super Mario Odyssey did in the last nine months. So, like, that's really crazy. I mean, like, imagine... I don't know. I mean, Ocarina of Time and Super Mario 64 are like both held in memories of most N64 gamers. It's like, that's the pinnacle of N64 or whatever. Yeah, because they're dumb. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Nah, man. But uh, (laughs) but that's funny because like that just would never be the case in the past for a Zelda game to sell more. I mean, especially with the sequel coming out, I'm sure that's helping the sales a little bit too. Uh, Man, I don't know. I wonder what the sequels were. That's going to be interesting. Yeah. Like how much is Breath of the Wild 2 going to sell in its first year? Yep. And especially compared to if we get a Super Mario Odyssey 2 or whatever. I like, I don't know. So I think a sequel of Breath of the Wild would get more people to play Breath of the would get more people to go back than mm. um, I have only played Super Mario Galaxy 2 because when I picked up a Wii after a while, um, I picked that was just the one that they had a GameStop, so I picked yeah, it up and I played it. And then I was because, like, I'm like good. I don't really have to go back and play Galaxy because it's like I got the idea, you know. 
Yeah, it's like how like freaking uh, Mario Odyssey is like fairly odd parents, whereas Breath of the Wild <laughs> is like uh, Avatar Last Airbender, right? Yeah. Where it's like you can't watch episode 17 without being confused. Yep. So you got to watch the first 16 episodes. That's exactly. Breath of the Wild. You got to play through the first game and be like, oh, okay, this is the state of affairs here. Yeah, I can exactly. play the second one. <laughs> Yep. So, I mean, that said, I think Super Mario Odyssey 2 would sell better than Breath of the Wild 2 for that reason, too. Maybe. I don't know. Because more people would pick it up as just a one-off thing as opposed to people are... I don't know, but there's there's a lot of sequels of like Uncharted Two sold better than Uncharted One, maybe. I don't don't know that for sure. Video games on average... If the first thing was successful, the second mm-hmm. thing is probably going to be more successful. Like, yeah. freaking, well, we'll get to it, but Luigi's Mansion. <laughs> yeah, Luigi's man, Mansion. alive. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, moving on down. This one's a pretty big deal. Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield, 16.06 million. Man, which that is was a successful number- boycott. <laughs> Never saw such a yeah. successful boycott. I liked uh, Daniel Lamad's uh, tweet where he was like, you guys all saying, you know, like, oh, successful boycott. Way to go, people. Me, an intellectual. 7.79 billion people still haven't bought Pokemon. <laughs> That's, true. That's true. I was That's like, true. That, was, that was tasty. I like that. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's the, you might remember some more stats than me on this, but now it's the number five or the fifth best selling Pokemon game ever mm. which is crazy yeah uh it's right i mean by now right and i'm yeah. talking yeah. like january numbers, yeah. yeah numbers that they're not counting in this report yep. it's sold more than any pokemon game in the last two generations so yep. nintendo switch and 3ds yep uh there's I still th- regular ds games that are ahead of it I, um, okay, Pokemon games. I'm gonna look it up because X and Y is on here. If that, if like the right, all the 3DS games, Pokemon games sales. I think the best selling, well, I know the best selling is like red and blue, and that's yeah, for sure. Green and blue is like 25 million or something like that. I think it was like 31 million or something crazy. Um, it's a lot. That's all I know. It's just, it's a high double digit number, (laughs) man. I found, uh, where was it? Somewhere it had okay, so Pokemon Red and Blue 31.37 oh, hey, yeah, million, right. Gold and Silver 23 million. Um, that's what, oh, that's what I okay, was Diamond and there. Pearl, you're right, yeah, yeah, Diamond and Pearl is at 17.67. Mm-hmm. But then at this point, um, yeah, Sun and Moon is at 16.16, and X and Y is at 16.4. So, yeah, within the month since these numbers were put up, definitely it's. Yeah, it's I mean, just from the over those. I think just from the Famitsu sale charts alone, we know that it's more than that, right? Um, so it'll be probably I don't know another month or so before it hits Diamond and Pearl, maybe more. But yeah, I think it'll be. That's... I think it'll be the most like the top selling Pokemon game since Game Boy. Yeah, Color. I think so. Which Wait, are Gold and Silver? Can you play Gold and Silver? Silver on the regular Game Boy? Uh, I think it's just Game no. Boy Color, right? Yeah, it's Game Boy Color. Just be- yes, it is just Game Boy Color. Just making sure. <laughs> Remember to vaguely. Yep. Because all That's... I had was a Game Boy Color, so I just you know. Well, oh, I had right, yeah. Game Boys after that, but I never had the OG Game Boy. I just had Game Boy Color. I think I had a Game Boy Pocket first. Was the first one that I had, and that's what I played blue on, and then yellow. Because yellow actually had color implementation, I think, right? But but it was also backwards. I yes. think. Okay. Yes. But yeah, so there you go. That's insane. Uh, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee sold total of 1.13 million in the last nine months. And it's, uh, it's, I mean, it's stagnated a little bit, which is to be expected contextually. Yeah, um, especially Splatoon, now because yeah, right. the new Pokemon game is out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Splatoon 2 is at 9.81, which is so close to 10 million. Like, come on, guys. Just Yeah, it's just creeping. It's just like, <laughs> I'll get there. I'll get there. <laughs> yeah, it's in the last nine months, it's sold uh, 1.1 1. 1 million. So hopefully that'll make it across the threshold. And just I, bet, like, I bet at least 60% of that is Japan. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, I mean, in like, I, it was fun looking at the, whenever this first came out, I was looking at the ratios and stuff. Uh, like New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, 1%, or sorry, not 1%, 10% is Japan. So it's 
26 or 260,000 versus 2.28 million um, for Japan to US. But then looking at ones like Ring Fit is like a third of it is Japan and Splatoon 2, like, I, like a third of it or a quarter of it. Never mind. I did the math wrong. Whatever. Japan's <laughs> buying stuff. They're doing a good job at buying the things. Yeah. Super Mario Party, 9.12 million. What in the game world? Without DLC, the game at almost 10 million. It's crazy. It's um it sold 2.72 million in the last nine months. Like, how is that Can't wait to play selling Su- faster Can't wait. than Super Mario Can't Odyssey? Can't wait until Super Mario Party 2 is announced at the on during the january nintendo <laughs> can't wait can't yeah wait. um and then new super mario bros u deluxe obviously doing doing well enough um, <laughs> mario maker dude. i know Rip. yeah mario maker right now is at uh super mario super mario maker 2 uh is at five million so it's it's just shy um of being on here but it's yeah rip dude there you go, Mario Maker. And last but not least, Luigi's Mansion 3, 5.37 million, which I think makes See, this, it... This how much did Dark Dawn... It's, Dark Moon? I think no. Dark Moon... Last time I saw it, like the when I actually checked the number and retained it in my mind, I think we checked it since then on the podcast, but I don't remember that. Yep. Um, it was at like 4 million. So I, I'd imagine it's like 6 now. Okay, yeah. Um, okay, as of September 2017, it sold five point four or five million units worldwide so yeah you can assume that it's sold some more since then mm. so probably around six million like you said okay but still uh, and i think this number is just a spite bob they <laughs> like all right all right people buy just enough so that it's over mario maker because bob goes out of his way to be like this ga- it's good <laughs> When everybody's like, this is the best looking game. Uh-huh. So it's the best game. I love this game. He's like, it's good. <laughs> and everybody's like, all right, fine. We're not buying Mario Maker. Screw yep. you. <laughs> what a time. Um, but yeah, so some other ones that weren't on the top 10, but that sold over a million in this last nine months. Uh, let's see. We got Link's Awakening is at 4.19 million. Another, another port, man. Yep. Another $60 port. Shouldn't have been $60. Maybe they would have sold $40 million. <laughs> you know, $20 difference, man. <laughs> True. Um, do, do, do. Fire Emblem Three Houses. This one surprised me in how little it sold in the holiday season because it was at, I think, $2.25 million or something like that before the holiday season. And I then know, it, I don't know if it surprises me, though. Because I figured it, Fire Emblem know. seems like the type of game that like you buy and you know you want it. Yes. Not really the game that you get for somebody else. Yeah. So like the, the people that want this game have this game. Yeah. And of, of course it's going to like like increase over time. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't think it's going to like be huge. It's not going to be even Pokemon Let's Go levels of like, okay, it's been six months. Here's another million units or whatever, right? Yeah. I think next year we might be around the like 3.5 million or like even mm-hmm. more maybe. Yep. Hopefully it does, because I mean it's just it's a great game. So hopefully it it is it is I gets agree. its status as the because I think Fates is at two point nine and two million, which is the top one. Mm-hmm. Um, I like numbers. For anybody who doesn't like numbers, I, I just realized this might be boring. I don't know, but I think it's really interesting. Here we go. Uh, uh, j- I mean, anecdotally, based yeah. on numbers, people usually like these ones more than average. True. Uh, Ring Fit Adventure sold over two million, which is quite a bit for a fitness game. <laughs> honestly, yeah. I mean, this seems like the the like closest success to them wanting to ape we a bit, you know? Yeah. Where it's like a thing comes out and people kind of uh, are like, I don't want to say repulsed by it, but kind of <laughs> where they're like, ah, the we, I don't want that. But this one, they're like, oh, we again, down, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know. Indeed. Um, and then the last two, which are pretty significant, are Astral Chain and Marvel Trash Ultimate game. Alliance 3, the Black Pretty good Order. game. <laughs> <laughs> I have yet to play Astral Chain. I, uh, Mitch I'm got joking. It. It's, it's not a trash like, game. Like, no. I, just, I just think that it takes four hours too long to become interesting. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, those are ones. That's interesting narrative around that, just that people were saying like, oh, these sold terribly, but then everybody... On platinum side, Nintendo side was like, "No, yeah, it's all we're we're pretty happy with it, honestly." Um, 
And mm. people were like, I don't know. You probably aren't because it probably you know, sold yeah, garbage. You're happy about yeah. it because you didn't say that it sold, sold 30 million copies uh-huh. the first three days. So that means that it sold like trash. <laughs> it means that you're losing money and you're just embarrassed about it. <laughs> exactly. It is funny, though. I just noticed the ratio for Mar- Marvel with Summit Alliance for Japan to overseas. Japan does oh, not care okay. they about not this care at all. A little bit. Uh, yeah, because it sold, yeah, like. 40 is that 40,000 no that's 400,000 yeah that would be no 40,000 40,000 because yeah. <laughs> that's 980,000 right yeah exactly so it sold 40,000 in Japan and 980,000 everywhere well where everywhere else? else and I I'd be surprised if it wasn't like but like 70 30 America to yeah. everyone else. oh yeah exactly I mean, we like us some superheroes, you know, what can I say? Um, but yeah, that's about it from, from this over here. The do, 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 do. Nothing really else to go. So I'll stop sharing my screen because nothing else particularly to show. But um, I'll be curious to see too, we get the Q&A stuff at some point. Yeah. Usually it seems like it's we got a some week. of it. It like trickles out. Like, uh, well, I, I think the, um, one of the points is in here. We're going to talk about it from the Q&A. Oh, well, perfect. Um, one, one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's the two ones down. Well, we can go ahead and just do I mean, Yeah, we might as well do that now. Um, but yeah, it was the no new Switch model in 2020. Yep. Um, so, yeah, this is from Furukawa, who during the briefing said, well, I guess somebody asked a question, and he said, regarding Nintendo Switch, we believe that it is important to continue to communicate the appeal of both Nintendo Switch systems and expand the install base. Please note that we have no plans to launch a new Nintendo Switch model during 2020. Um, I think that this essentially means nothing. Like, <laughs> I think a lot of people are using this as like definitive proof. It's like, well, we're definitely not getting it because for a college that they have no plans and no plans means nothing in the entertainment industry. Nothing. It yeah. just means like w- we may or may not be doing it. We don't want to talk about it. So stop asking us. <laughs> you know? So like, it could mean that they're not doing it. And that yeah. they're definitely not doing it, but it could also mean that they're doing it and they just don't want to say. Yep. So that's the thing. I mean, like... Because in 2011, if we all recall... <laughs> the DS Lite. 20, no, it was 2010, 2010. Well, that too. 2010, it was. Where oh, it was yeah, like, yeah. we HD. Where's the HD we at? And they're like, we're not working on an HD console. And they're like, eh, you know, 2011. They're like, hey, Wii U, <laughs> man. It's technically yep. not Wii HD. It's the Wii U. <laughs> uh-huh. You know what? You know what's messed up? Mm-hmm. You know it'd be also funny if they like named it Wii U despite everybody, but Wii U <laughs> probably would have sold better if they named it Wii HD. Yeah. Oh man, that's true. The I mean, I guess if we're going into technicalities, you could. No, it's this new Switch model. I don't know. Whatever. So yeah, it's options are either there's some kind of like finagly thing where he worded it in a way that it's like it's true or. It's just straight up completely true. I think or he's lying. Them, I think just I, them wording it as we have no plans to them is them not really saying anything. Yeah, right. Like so, they, I mean, like that's it. That's not them lying. It's just that it's like, well, we, yeah. we don't have plans. Like, because them having no plans to release in 2020 mm-hmm. could just mean, oh, we didn't nail down the 2020 date yet. It's TBD. Like, it, mm-hmm. it exists, and we don't know if it's coming out in 2020. So, yeah. we're not lying. You know, and they're like, oh, we decided it's coming mm-hmm. out 2020. You know, I think the thing with the Switch Pro and all that is like, sort of, if ideally we can all sort of get over it for a while and just pretend like we didn't even know anything about it, that would be maybe helpful to a lot of people. Because I think a lot. Of, well, so one of the comments that'll be from from my video was somebody specifically asking like, well, what do I do? Like a legitimate concern of like, what do I do if the Switch, I buy a Switch, Switch Pro comes out the next week, like that'll really suck. And I'm like, I mean, True. if that happens, then you should be good. Like yeah, I mean, retail, like within just the return next it. Week. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but you know, that kind of thing in any case where it's like uh buyer's remorse because yeah. you know yeah, and, it, it comes out Nintendo too soon no covered stuff like that with the with the new switch yeah where it was so, like if you bought a switch within this time frame then just yeah and i think so like going back to my friend chad that i mentioned in the switch light switch who Pro, is a real Bob legend person, he was real person you know? who's very nice um <laughs> oh he was actually he was on the podcast that i was on beforehand too um that i invited you on and that kind of thing uh-huh. so you would have gotten to meet chad if we if i ever got around to actually uh, right. doing that right. in any case chad um 
is my friend who he has a Wii U, so he played Breath of the Wild on the Wii U. And then since then, it's like, yeah, I'd like a Switch, but like, I'll probably just wait until the Switch Pro comes out, which I mean, like, it's fine. And he's, it's, like it's not like he's hurting for it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, he's just not hurting for it. But at the same time, he's been saying specifically, I'll be waiting till the Switch Pro comes out since like early 2018 or so to where like if he was hurting for it and was like man i wish i could get a switch but i just would rather wait then it's like yeah it's, it's kind of like, one of those where it's like i'm gonna like i don't want to go to the bathroom right now in case the teacher comes back or yeah you know, it's like the longer you wait the longer it's eventually gonna happen so like yeah exactly don't worry the, about the, it the know? longer you wait the least worth it it is for you to yeah. just bite the bullet it, you right might as well just, yeah. at this point you might as well just wait for next gen at this yeah. point yes and then just go in on that. So that's, you know, it's it's a funny thing. But all things considered, like, I think you're right that this doesn't specifically mean anything regarding the Switch Pro. Um, but maybe it's better if we all just pretend like it does. <laughs> I think that people just generally, uh, and this is going to sound like something that I don't mean it as, but uh, mm-hmm. it works for comedy, you know? Uh-huh. Yep. I think people need to just be like me. And just assume that whatever happens, happens. And it yeah. doesn't matter, but it would be cool if it did. You yeah. know? Like the January Direct. Where everybody like was like, it's definitely happening. We're getting the January Nintendo Direct. We're getting the January Nintendo Direct. What, what day is it, Parker? It is right now, uh, January 32nd, by the time uh, you you're might, listening you to this. You might go into Nintendo Twitter and say anything. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just, when the January Direct. <laughs> When that direct when, happens, when the next direct happens, yeah, it's going to just be, be like, oh, it's January forty third. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> the January forty third direct. But yeah, like I promise you, like everybody, that. I'm going to do that when it happens. I, it's like, I like it too much. That's the sort of thing that I think causes more problems than anything because, yeah. it, and it's not. I I don't think it's as much on people like us. Uh, who are like, man, this would be cool. And even the people that are like, this would be cool. And I'm going to call it the January Direct. It's more right. about like the people that then take that as gospel. Because yeah. they're like, oh, they're on the YouTube. And they have X amount of subscribers. So they know something more than I do. Mm-hmm. You know, like this isn't my job. So I'm not researching this stuff all day. Yep. I don't have to know for sure whether this is legitimate or whatever, right? They do. So I'm just going to take their word for it. Also, um, we need to go back find all the like supposed leakers or whatever that were like oh it's for sure happening this next week because like it's so you kind of forget who said all those things um to where by the time it doesn't happen you forget who to who should have lost credibility because of it yeah we should like go back every time take record of those things and be like okay you don't count anymore you don't yeah, count it's anymore. like the first time anybody says it it needs to it, like somebody needs to like take it down on record yep. and be like well he said this if it doesn't exactly. happen yeah, he's losing ten thousand followers. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it just got to a point where everybody was like, and also a thing that comes up a lot is people take precedent as a law, and that's right. just wrong. It's just mm-hmm. not wrong in like this isn't uh, ethical, but wrong right. as in like incorrect. Yeah. Yes, not right. <laughs> or yes, incorrect. <laughs> way to phrase it. It's incorrect uh, uh-huh. to be like, well, they did this before, so they'll do it again. It's like no, because they do what they want when they want. If they yeah. want to do what they did before, then they'll do mm-hmm. it again. But if they don't, then they won't. So that's yep. why it's weird to just take precedent as gospel. And yeah. Be like, well, you know, this this time, and they mm-hmm. did, it's like, we have now had three years in a row that have been completely different from each other. So like, you know, yeah. could be whatever. So and it, like the only time that you can set your watch to like a direct is what like E three. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that's pretty much the only and time. That's so like, far, for sure. <laughs> There's going to be a direct on E3 yep. or during and like, E3. So far, September has been, until it's not, so far, yeah. like second week of September roughly has been a thing. But again, they could change that as much as they want, and that's, that's their own precedent. So like... Exactly. There's yeah. just, there's, there's nothing there that uh, holds them to any date other mm-hmm. than E3, because you have to like book E3 in advance. You know, and yep. I, when I say yep, advance, right. it's like, well, I'm going to be at E3 and I'm going to pay for like this period or whatever. Like, you know, like you got to mm-hmm. hold your spot as it were. Mm-hmm. Um, what if you so. got to E3 and like sat down in Nintendo's amphitheater area or whatever, you know, something around the screen and they were like, uh, we're going to do it in three weeks. <laughs> yeah, like they use, they use their E3 presentation to announce a different presentation <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> 
that would suck. <laughs> I do. I mean, I assume, you know, if it, if the drag happens in February, that's also exciting because I assume some of those games that they announce are going to show up at PAX East. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, that would be fun. Cause I, I that's, that's really the only reason why I, I assume that we'll get directs yeah. in the first two months is because mm-hmm. they do go to PAX East generally yeah. and they bring some of their first batch of announcements with them. Yeah. Uh, but I never am like, well, it's, it's, I mean, clearly. I've beaten this drum all year so far yeah. that I'm never like, oh, it's definitely January or it's definitely February 2nd or whatever. I'll jokingly be like, this game's coming out freaking April 4th or whatever. And if it happens, it happens. Yep. But if not... Uh-huh. Every game comes out April 1st. Uh, speaking of games, <laughs> Pokemon exists and uh, they sure announced enough. Pokemon Home with sure some enough. details this yeah. week. Mm-hmm. And people, people are boy, mad. howdy. But less mad, at least. Uh, less mad than what do you less mean? mad than i would expect them to be mm. um because like w- when like pokemon sword and shield happened and all that stuff and blah blah we were talking mm-hmm. about that um and i mean i'm just typically less vitriolic than the <laughs> internet just in general like there's yeah. stuff that i don't like and i'm just like i don't like that and then i leave it alone and i'm done i don't like you know i'm not taking up pitchforks to be like right i want to hate on this thing and anybody that's not hating on it is a shill or whatever right <laughs> um last time we were talking about like that's not this it's not that big of a deal like this part kind of sucks and this is unfortunate mm-hmm. but like eh, you know it's pokemon yeah. pokemon's pokemon um there were less people that were mad that we weren't mad <laughs> mm-hmm. um so yeah. that's that's a step forward, I guess. I think so. I mean, people have talked about. I don't know that we have to go through all the specific details because a you did that on the Wolf Den. B everybody else has already done that. But like, just yeah, in general, here's my only thought with it mm-hmm. um, is just that I would have hoped that it would be more than just a storage and trading mechanism or whatever because like and that's something we've talked about before that I mean, like there would be I mean, it kind of is because it has more in what way than that. like it has the mystery gift situation uh-huh. and it has pokedex stuff uh-huh. where like i was talking about on wolf then live where it's like they both basically folded in all their pokedex apps that used to mm-hmm. be on ios uh where it has all the pokedex entries for all the pokemon and it has like stat right. information and move stuff like they sell okay that's cool. like guidebooks with this stuff where it's like you, you ever see a pokemon strategy guide mm-hmm. most of that strategy guide is this information just bulbapedia <laughs> yeah I, exactly um so it's like they have yeah. stuff like that on there and then they have like the built-in judge stuff so it's like it's just right, them yeah. consolidating everything onto this app yeah i think i guess so what i'm saying is like like be able to battle and do stuff like yeah, that battle mini games or mm-hmm. like uh when it says pokemon home like it would be cool if there was something that made it feel like a home you know like you decorate your room yes you decorate your room you could bring in like a pokemon or something like that of course that would mean animations and i mean that kind of stuff no like, i was i was literally saying you could decorate your room <laughs> in this <laughs> oh really yes oh okay well yeah, then that does do that decorate or whatever i don't know how i missed that I guess I just looked at the... Because you were mad like the internet. You oh, no, I wasn't I was, about, I was about to say a specific YouTuber. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Uh, but yeah, you watched a PokeTubers video. Like, because that's the ironic thing, especially about this generation. Like, if you want, mm-hmm. like, information that's just the information, don't mm-hmm. get it from a PokeTuber. <laughs> yeah, because right. chances are they're injecting their opinion before they distill all the information. Yeah. They're going to disregard the everything to point out the parts that they don't like about it you know yep um so yeah i'm trying to find the um the room thing are there any screenshots of what that looks like um i think they have it on here because i remember bob Mm -hmm. uh mentioned it so i guess the the experience long story short it's not i don't think it's for me i'm not mad about any of your room it's at the bottom it's below judge pokemon Gotcha. Above news. Oh, yeah. In your room, you'll be able to see all sorts of information about events or the games you've connected to Pokemon Home. You'll also be able to edit your profile using stickers. You can obtain stickers when you meet certain conditions or perform certain tasks in Pokemon Home knows its challenges. In mobile app of Pokemon Home, you can check out how ranked battles and various online competitions in Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield are going, as well as the rankings of the Pokemon being used in them by going to the battle data. Okay. So it sounds like it's, it's still not maybe a room just in the sense yeah, it's that it's not I was, like, it's not like animal crossing, <laughs> right? 
I, so I think that's the thing. It's like, um, I, right now there's, there's really no reason for me to get the paid Pokemon home, which yeah, is no, fine. And not. that's, and that's which I think is a good thing. Yes, right, I think exactly. I think it's great that something like this doesn't feel essential, but it feels uh-huh. substantial for the type of person yeah. that will want I think like I that. guess what I'm saying is what would have been cool is if there was something that doesn't make it feel essential, but makes it feel fun, mm-hmm. rather than most of the stuff that's in here feels utilitarian. Like, yeah. oh, that's going to be really useful, you know, which is right. perfect for the people that actually need it. So but it's I think, just, I think it, this is in line with what they wanted Pokemon yeah. Sword and Shield to be. Where yeah. Pokemon Sword and Shield is 100% geared towards the end goal of right. what Pokemon is, right? Where it's like, mm-hmm. it's you're breeding the perfect Pokemon and you're going to take it and you're going to battle it against other people's inferior Pokemon and you're going to be the best one. Uh And this is just uh, doubling down on that. So you're Um, taking your Blastoise and you're beating up other people's Charizards because I mean, that's how if they're, if they're, that's the ranking, you know, if the Charizard is not good, then sure. I mean, compared to all Blastoises, I mean that's not, I mean Man. that's not that's not even true. You, know? <laughs> you just get a freaking G Max Charizard teaches Solar Beam mm-hmm. Rip Blastoise. Oh, I Rip. yeah. Except for Blastoise is just really cool. Um, uh, moving along now, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that's that was my only thing as far as like what could have been what I thought could have been a cool opportunity with Home that they didn't do. But otherwise, like I understand people being mad about having to pay for things. But again, like. M- the only things about- I would understand people just being paying. mad about having to pay for things if they had to pay for things. Right. Yes, exactly. Because for this, like, really pay for one month of it. If you have Pokemon Bank and want to bring stuff over, pay for one month of it, bring stuff over from Pokemon Bank, and then, ta-da, there, you're good. You know, like, otherwise, uh, the free one is going to do all the things that I would need from it, which is, like, bring stuff over from Let's Go into Sword and Shield, I guess. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So, yeah. But there's that in any case. Uh, but on some more fun news, I mean, that's fun enough, but on some other kind of fun news, uh, Animal Crossing got a Switch. It did. And it looks today. great. And I went to Joy-Con. I don't really care that much about the dock. I mean, it looks good, but I went to Joy-Con. <laughs> yeah. Um, here we go. Let me share my screen so people can see it. Look at that. I showed it to Ashley and she's like, oh, I really want that. And I'm like, Switch number three. I was like, I don't think that's going to happen. But maybe (laughs) maybe get just the Joy-Cons down the road because usually that ends up being a thing that they... I mean, just move to Japan and then buy the (laughs) Joy-Con. There. There you go. Classic. Also, for the record, for the record, for the record, Charizard is confirmed faster than Blastoise. So rip Blastoise, dude. (laughs) Wait, is confirmed what? Oh, faster. faster. Yeah. <sighs> rip, rip. Well, look rip. at that. Rip. Um, but more importantly, <laughs> look at these cool, look at that cool switch. Ooh. Ooh. Not more importantly, the blast was being cooler than the Charizard because that's just the way it is. But look at this pretty <laughs> switch. What a nice thing. Um, details what a nice are, thing. It's the freaking sea salt ice cream, dude. It is. Um, I assume it's, I actually didn't look it up. Or C- it doesn't or, include no, C- well both actually those are both true those are both true <laughs> is um okay so it doesn't come with the game with it nope okay that's economics <laughs> i mean i don't even mean like bundled bundled but like kind of weird that it's not just 360 with animal crossing because oh like, yeah true that's true seems like a no break because that's what they did with like mario odyssey they had mario odyssey included but it was like full price um yeah so just kind of random. Uh, Smash Brothers. Front, but... They didn't. Include. Oh yeah, exactly. It's coming out before the the game is. Oh, sure. that's true. It's like the. But even with Smash Brothers, that came out like the week or two beforehand, and they just like had a code or something, yeah. and it just like couldn't be redeemed. In any case, it looks great. So even if you don't like Animal Crossing specifically, like man, if you're in the pastel colors, which on the Joy-Con video that I made, like a yeah, they were ton in that. of the comments. It was were... in the Mario Party video too. Oh, yeah, but, like, Mario so many comments are people being, like, like if I just had pastel Joy-Con colors, that would be the best. There you go. There Buy a Switch or move to Japan or import. Yep, so it's going to be a crazy old time. It's going to sell a lot. Uh, 
interesting that it, that it wasn't a Switch Lite, but also makes sense yeah. at the same time. I tweeted because, about that. Yeah. Because I feel like this way, they talk about, oh yeah, they also did announce the whole um, eight players can share one island, which I think we already knew. Yep, we knew that. And four, I made a video about that. You did. Four players <laughs> on a single console, I think yep. it mentioned. Mm-hmm. I also mentioned that in said video. Did you? Okay, so a clarification though, because I didn't read to find this out. It sounds like from something that I briefly read that across one system, you can only have yep, one, one island. island. Yep. So if you, if you use another profile, it'll give you another islander on that island that is on your Switch. Interesting. Yep. I wonder why. I don't know. I think that that was just like their vision for the game. Uh-huh. Like always, they've always wanted to uh-huh. like have this one thing that you share with your family or friends on your console, and that's the destination. Rather than like the island being yours, mm-hmm. you're like uh, a citizen of the island. Interesting. I also wonder, um, like end game, not end game really, but further down into it, everything that we've seen so far, at least to me, again, having not played an Animal Crossing game before, seems like it's pretty early game kind of stuff like a little shed and a hammock and stuff like that i wonder if down the road it'll be like a town and like big buildings kind of thing within the island as well yes okay can confirm Nice. But it's it's like a it's kind of like a smaller scale like Sims Sims, Sims kind of thing yeah of right situation where it's like you work towards that you're like all yeah. right I got money I got enough money to upgrade mm-hmm. or or to buy a new shop you know mm-hmm. like that sort of thing it'll be interesting I imagine when they do their big Animal Crossing blowout within the next month or so that we'll see some of that stuff because that would be interesting for me to see at least just to kind of get more of an idea of kind of the scale and scope of what everything's going to be like in the long run. Cause right now, again, the things that we've like actually seen mostly seem to be pretty low key early game stuff. So I would like to know more. That is all. We'll get animal crossing direct the animal crossing direct. <laughs> Honestly, probably. And probably we're not going to see EA games on switch. <laughs> um what <laughs> this is this is the last article that we've got um yeah this is i mean it kind of follows up on old ones of them talking to you but just always interesting to talk about because of how this is uh somebody let's see ea had their i guess their same kind of financial briefing or something like that and then somebody asked a question about them being on switch and the coo said we're always looking and discussing with Nintendo what else we can put on the platform as the platform grows. Our interest in adding content grows for that platform. But we're also conscious of the fact that the top selling titles by a long shot are all Nintendo software, which is fabulous software, but it helps us balance the realities of how big our market could be there. But trust us, but trust that we're looking at that. You'll hear more things in the future about what we're putting on the platform. This is a stupid comment um, <laughs> because, like, I could see them feeling like that. Well, and again, it's, it's stu- even this like line of logic is dumb. So beware what yep. I'm going to say is dumb. But I could see them <laughs> saying like, ah, we don't want to put like plant versus zombie, plants versus zombies, garden warfare or whatever, because mm-hmm. that's too close to Splatoon, and we're not going to beat Splatoon, so we might as well not even come to the platform. Um, I can see that. Mm-hmm. But nobody's like Madden or Animal Crossing, <laughs> you know. Like nobody's yeah, right. doing that. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of games that they could put on there that would appeal to a lot of people that have mm-hmm. switches that don't currently have that niche filled, like yeah. Madden, because they have a monopoly on that market. Yeah, like, you know, like that sort of situation. Or even if they, <laughs> well, eh, they. Pro- I was going to say like they could try doing freaking NBA Live, but 2K uh-huh. already did the smart thing and put. 2k on there like there's mm-hmm. a, a lot of like markets that could be filled there uh yeah. with the the ip that they have at least in the like sports vertical they yeah. could do need for speed that will probably do well on switch because yep. there's nothing uh notable in that niche outside of like what asphalt and grid mm-hmm. um so yeah i mean i had a thought and i kind of forgot it but overall i think they uh 
A, the games that they have put on have either been small. Okay, I remember what it was. They're talking about the ones that are like the top selling games and comparing yeah. everything to that. But like, right. also, who's to say that your game is going to have to be the top selling game exactly. on there anyway? Like, yeah. Call of Duty and GTA are the top selling games on a pl- a bunch of other platforms. So like, you're also not getting the top selling ones there. I mean, I know that they mean like the kind of games that are selling well, maybe aren't the same, but also there's just not that many of the kinds of games that EA does and the ones that are done. Some of them, some of them are done well, but some of them also like FIFA and very also like, isn't done well. With, so, like, exactly. Sell well. With that, a lot of times the games that sell best on Switch aren't just the ones made by Nintendo, but also made by developers that make the game as if it's a Nintendo game. Right. And I don't mean like it's the type of game that Nintendo would make, mm-hmm. but they actually consider the platform as the platform that it's mm-hmm. on, right? And they say, okay, what can we do to make this game run the best that it possibly can mm-hmm. for this platform? And then it runs like a Nintendo game would, if not a little bit worse, you yeah. know? Whereas EA is like, eh, it's, it's not good enough to be next gen, so we can't, like, do glorify, copy, paste, or yeah. whatever, right? So let's just do last gen and put that on there. Nobody wants to play that. Because yeah. Switch isn't as powerful as this gen, but it's definitely significantly more powerful than last gen. So it's like, why am I paying for a last gen game on, my, on the console that's more powerful than that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, like, so I don't, I don't know. I feel like we don't want to freaking pay sixty dollars for your leftovers. Right? Yeah, <laughs> there's a good chance that moving into the future, we may see stuff like Sims or Plant vs Zombies or stuff. But since we haven't yet, also there's just as good a chance that we won't. Um, but I think yeah, EA's we can probably just account for the fact that EA is probably just not really ever going to be much of a presence on Nintendo consoles for a while, and that's fine. But I don't know. We'll see. They're dumb. EA's dumb. A little bit, yeah. It is sad because like really they used to have some <laughs> they used to have some good games and be a decent developer. And like even if they were like, I don't know, or 2004 or something like that. Back in that kind of era, like I don't know. Like my favorite Lord of the Rings game, one of my favorite GameCube games was made by them and I really enjoyed it. And like I didn't feel like it was like money hungry cash grab kind of thing that most of their stuff feels like now, but that's just kind of the vibe that we get from them, which is disappointing. I mean, but, it's, kind of, it's kind of like the, uh, you know, worst timeline version of what I was talking about with Nintendo, right? Mm-hmm. It's like they see what works mm-hmm. and they steer into that skid. They mm-hmm. see that their most profitable games are the games when they do all that crappy stuff, you know? People yeah, still right. buy into it. Yep. So they do more of it, you know? Um, yep. It's unfortunate, but it's true. Rip dude. Yep, and it's unfortunate that you can't make 12 videos a week, but you did make one, and <laughs> uh, we're going to read some comments from it. <laughs> that sounds like a nightmare. I was going to say, that was, uh, yeah, that would be awful. <laughs> that was, that was just kind of overboard. <laughs> like, maybe two in the future, maybe, but 12 is obnoxious, dude. <laughs> yep. I mean, or they just all suck is also possible. That's true. You know? That's true. Or take I one could. and chop it up a whole bunch. I could. Never mind. I'm not going to do that because that's <laughs> a direct call out. I'm not doing it. <laughs> uh, yeah, there you go. Um, okay, you got some comments. Do you want a quick overview of your video for anybody that didn't watch it? Um, I made a video. It's all about how Nintendo could be doing more with their retro games. Mm-hmm. or like, and I, By retro, I mean games that are not on this platform but are on their other ones. You know? That's true. Uh, and I wish that the financial briefing came out the day before my video, you know, something mm-hmm. like that. Because then I could have included this information as a C, <laughs> you know, put more of them on here because mm-hmm. freaking Mario Kart 8 sold 22 million units. That's true. Um, so there's that. That's my summary. Good summary. <laughs> Some comments. Um, Lack, Latchlant, Lacklant, something, 1984 said... Prior to SNES games being available on the Switch, they were releasing new NES games every month. I want to see Nintendo go back to doing that with both NES and SNES titles. You have to pay for Nintendo Switch Online, and I think that releasing games every three months or so isn't the best option, to be honest. 
it's interesting how iconic Nintendo like Nintendo's legacy games are, and yet they don't seem to do mu- to care so much about making them available again. Compare that to various PC gaming platforms like GOG and Steam, who have many retro PC games available for purchase online. It's so easy for me to buy the PC games I played or wanted to play as a child, and that's what I've done. And that's what I've done thanks to mainly GOG, but also to Steam to a lesser extent. What if Nintendo were to sell their retro games in an online store so they could be played on a PC? What if they were to sell their library of classic games through GOG or Steam? I love my Nintendo Switch, but I really think the Nintendo could do much better in terms of releasing their classic games. I think what they're trying to avoid there is kind of what happens on those platforms, where a lot of times you may see that and you're like, oh, that game I love is on this platform. I'm going to buy that, right? And then maybe there's 9,000 other people that feel the same way. Whereas how Nintendo does it, they make it an event and it's Mm -hmm. almost like they relaunched the game and they're like, hey, Super Mario World's on the Switch again. And then everybody immediately knows, oh, shoot, Super Mario World's on the Switch. I'm going to play that or I'm Mm going to buy that for the ninth time or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, If they just dumped all their stuff on there, the people that are really passionate about specific games are going to buy them, but nobody else will. So this way they're like, hey. Link to the Past, dude. I know you never played mm-hmm. it before, but it's a cool game and you like Breath of the Wild, right? So maybe <laughs> you should play Link to the Past. You know, like that sort of thing, right? Yeah. They can't do that if they're just like, here's all our games. And also, like with the virtual console thing, I think that's a bad model because then you get people looking at it and being like, well, it's a virtual console game and SNES games cost $6. So I don't like the fact that Super Mario World costs more than freaking Super Castlevania or whatever, right? <laughs> like they... <laughs> Want to be able to say, well, Super Mario World has more cachet than freaking Darkwing Duck or whatever, right? <laughs> so we're going to charge more for Super Mario World. And that's mm-hmm. just how it is. If they don't have this like overarching banner to be like, like to standardize their pricing and all that stuff, then they're free to do with what they want. You know, they can say like, to mm-hmm. us, Earthbound's a $10 game. So that's how much we're going to charge for it. And then they're going to see how many people buy it and then adjust from there, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they can't do that if they're like a virtual console. And virtual consoles, this much money. True. Yeah, I think uh, kind of within, along those lines, the way that they're retro games, at least the SNES and NES games, um, and to lesser extent, the new like n64 gamecube and even maybe Game Boy and stuff is are their marketing tools more than they are just money making tools because i think like people would definitely buy if they did a virtual console thing people would definitely buy them but again it would be kind of like one and done and they would buy the hits but that's about it whereas this way any game is kind of as long as it's not like you know, they, they're like here's these three nes games and you're like i've never heard of here's any of those three yeah right <laughs> As long as it's not that kind of thing, then putting them out just makes you feel like, oh, cool, like I need to get in on that, even if you like literally never touch it, which I mean, that's when the SNES games came out, I played played some of A Link to the Past and then other games came out and I played those and I haven't, I mean, I played Super Super Mario World too, um, but I haven't gone back and played the SNES games since then just because I've had other stuff to play, but it's still something where I feel like, yeah, but I've got them there if I ever want them. And that's value, you know, even though I'm not actually using them and stuff to like that. To this day, there are still games this that are day? on the week. February yes, 30 or day. January 32nd? Uh-huh, yep. Wow. To this day, there are still Wii Virtual Console games that I'm like, that's on there? <laughs> you know, And that's not uh-huh. valuable to them because I can't buy it anymore. Yeah, <laughs> but right. when they say, hey, this is available everybody's like oh shoot you know like that's a thing instead of just stealth releasing everything they've ever made like yeah. everybody seems to want them to do yeah i just doesn't really i mean like yeah like i um so my f- friends chris and stephanie that have a kid that he's playing through i just loaned them my snes classic so they're playing through some of those um uh, but they they just beat um super mario rpg and that was when I told them that, like, yeah, the Switch, if you guys right, want to get one. Is their kid clamoring for Gino and Smash? And Smash? Uh, uh, he sure is. I mean, he is Gino in Smash. So, no. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I told them in any case, I was like, yeah, if you, if you get a Switch, it's $20 a year, and it's, like, for all these NES, SNES games and stuff like that. And especially when N64 and GameCube ones are going to be on there, that's, like, 
that's a really strong sell because right now their son is six and he plays just their retro consoles that they have. So they're in 64 and GameCube and stuff. Um, but if they could play those without having to boot up different consoles, like that would be a strong sell. So I think, I don't know, maybe that's not even, <laughs> that's not even really regarding this comment anymore, except for the fact that that would get people to buy switches rather than just getting people to buy those games, which if it was on steam, then people would buy those games on there, but it wouldn't be helping their platform in the same way. Um, kind of yeah. get people into their ecosystem. It would be just, getting them a little bit of money but in somebody else's ecosystem and i and i i still hold to the thing of like what parker what classic games were on steam <laughs> i don't know right right <laughs> but even people that don't have a switch can tell yeah. you like oh yeah link's awakening or not mm-hmm. link's awakening mm-hmm. but you will well, yeah, yeah link's awakening or sure. links to the past or super mario world or yoshi's mm-hmm. island or mm-hmm. super metroid is on switch because mm-hmm. nintendo made a big deal about it right so everybody else is making a big deal about it smart and i just think that makes more sense than just saying here's all the things Mm -hmm. super fans you'll buy it and never talk about it again (laughs) true so there you go yeah uh good question though and ram inc production says i'm always excited to see when people talk about retro games so here are my hopes i'd love to see them release past games on the switch but if not it'd be nice to see them remake the games as dlc for the newest games in the same series it would be quite an undertaking to remake ocarina of time but a lot easier if they used a modified version of breath of the wilds engine and a few of the already made assets it's like the difference between making new characters for smash and creating me costumes it could also fix up timeline confusions i think i've brought this up before but it'd be cool to have all the past 3d mario games easily playable in one big game with seamless transitions between one another and a few improvements added as well like making the camera a bit better for sunshine yes please and we're adding an optional traditional controller support to the galaxy games p.s hope y'all are doing well smiley face we're good um i think this is a neat idea i don't know if they would do i don't think that this is even feasible unless they're like here's dlc is 40 dollars or whatever like i could see them doing that and doing the whole game but maybe something more along the lines of like the mushroom kingdom i was just about to say i was talking to mitch actually who i think is downstairs now um (laughs) but i was talking to mitch the other day about or yesterday about exactly that in mario odyssey that like it was awesome to have the mushroom kingdom Although I do wish that they leaned into it just a little bit more mm-hmm. of like in mostly just that when you go into like even going and playing through yes. like one level. Bob, um, yeah, exactly. Yep. That would be if you could go That'd into the it. castle and there was just one level from Mario 64, that would have scratched that itch a hundred percent. I would have been like, whoa, you, oh, they did it. Um, so that would have been cool. But like nevertheless. There's a Bob bomb prince now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's. But that said, I think fully remaking the games would be quite an endeavor. But doing little nods like that, I think, are a great way to do it as well. And like, yeah. I'm sure like if they're going to remake the game, they're going to remake the game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, because like, probably it's, it's almost yeah. it's it's basically to that point, kind of like what we were talking about before. Where it's like, well, I already waited three years to buy a Switch, <laughs> so I might as well wait another two years. Mm-hmm. Like they're like, well, I already put most of the game in here. The only thing I didn't do was make new assets. I might as well just make these new assets, and then I have a whole new game. <laughs> yeah, I think know, that's or a new release. I think because you're totally right, uh, Ram Inc. I can't really. There's that's not an easy thing to just call you. Um, Ramic Productions. I think you're totally right on the fact that it's easier to remake a game in the engine that already exists. Right. But at that point, it's like it's also much easier to just port over the old game. And I think I'd still rather have. I think I new think games. I think instead it's of like rehashes or remakes of the that, old yeah. ones. Like I'd I rather think have it's the definitely engine. easier to do what he's suggesting than to make a remake. Right. Yes. But I think that it's better ROI to make the remake <laughs> and that's mm-hmm. why the remakes get made versus dlc because they can say well we can spend say a million dollars developing this remake or we could spend five hundred thousand on making new assets mm-hmm. or using the assets that we have and making dlc for this game and then mm-hmm. get what 30 percent less profit mm-hmm. right so it's just like, why not spend that million dollars for the potential to sell a game for $60 and then sell it to a whole new wave of people in addition to the people that are already in on this franchise? Mm-hmm. Because that's going to sell more than any DLC ever would. So, 
It's kind of like that. what Bob was saying about like Pokemon, mm-hmm. where it's like they they probably would sell more if they mm-hmm. released a game because you go into GameStop and they're like, the new Pokemon game came out and it's on the store shelves, and then mm-hmm. you get the sticker. You're like, oh shoot, I want to I want to <laughs> buy that. That's dope. Yeah. And then you buy that. Whereas DLC doesn't have that same like appeal. They might mm-hmm. have a card on the shelf that says mm-hmm. get the new DLC. It's like eh, it's not as appealing. Yep. That said, though, I do hope that like Super Mario Odyssey two, if that happens, does have like uh, a Delfino Plaza yeah, yeah, exactly. level, like that. You know, because I think that's the kind of thing that like makes us. It a introduces people to the old ones for when that does come out. I guess to any NSO, um, but also it makes old fogies like myself feel real good about it because it's fun. Uh, next question, Benjamin Aquino, what's up? Benjamin, um, I honestly would love to see Final Fantasy titles on the Nintendo Switch Online service. Thank you. I felt shafted ever since the U.S. never saw a release of Final Fantasy 3D that was out in Japan. It hurt my soul. LOL. <laughs> I do agree that releasing N64 games may not be the best option for them. Those games, like you mentioned, are just not good looking and with very antiquated mechanics. I'd be, uh, I'd be on board with more remakes as long as the frame rate isn't shaky. Cough, Link's Awakening. Cough, cough. <laughs> um i mean i i don't have a horse in the final fantasy uh title race but i mean yeah that'd be neat mm-hmm. uh, that that's really up to square enix i'd imagine i would think so too i i, I feel, don't know I feel why. like to them they wouldn't want to do that because they're like well we could just do yeah. that we could just do the final fantasy collection which is baffling to me that it hasn't that, that we haven't gotten a uh, one through six remake you know collection kind of thing or one through three four through six or something i i don't know but like because i specifically i would like to play six on my switch um because although i've still yet to play any final fantasy although now i have 12 because i got it for christmas blah blah whatever um uh yeah i don't know six just like feels like it's the one that's gonna i don't know be fun and i want to play it so whatever in any case the other things uh I personally would love them to put N64 games on NSO, but I mean, yes, those games yeah, are janky, that, but they're exactly, jank that but I that's, love. But that's what I, and I wasn't even thinking about you when I said that, but <laughs> in the video when I was like, yeah, mm-hmm. there's going to be people that are going to be like, this game's great, but it's like, you already are past that. It's not your first introduction to this game. So you've nope. already made the excuse in your head to be like, yeah, this game sucks, but like, that's good. It was good to me when I was a kid. <laughs> It's honestly like even um, it'll be hard to see because I've never played Banjo Kazooie. So say Banjo Kazooie, well, I guess they would only come in. Some, I need to go play the original Banjo Kazooie now because like on the N sixty four, yeah, like, to even see on like the Xbox, it's like because it's one that I haven't played. Or maybe Donkey Kong sixty four would be a better example because that's one that like you know the only excuses people can give it usually is people that it's like very nostalgic for it and stuff like that. Um, but even then, just. I being accustomed to what like N64, N64 games 64, exactly. look like in general and right. feel like in general means I'm going to give it more excuses than somebody brand new to it. So, right. you know, whatever it is, what it is, which is just like, I don't know. I feel, I feel like it's just an excuse that people are more okay with giving. Where it's mm-hmm. like, well, it was in 64, right. Mm-hmm. Um, where nobody's like, nobody feels the need to add any asterisks to uh super mario world like that's just a good game right yeah like that's a game that could stand shoulder to shoulder with something like celeste without saying like well this one's on the Mm -hmm. it's like no it's just full stop it's on par (laughs) if not significantly better than anything else that's coming out in this style now something that i think is funny though within that is like games like ukulele and yeah. other 3D platformers specifically try to put in N64 type filters and can't do it. It's just like so funny that we can't yeah, quite and recreate also, bad graphics. <laughs> also, also, they try to recreate the mechanics and the games feel bad. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. because the mechanics were bad. It turns out, you know, it's shocking, but like, you know, um, maybe just make them like Super Mario Odyssey, like the evolution of what it's become. Not try to ape what it was. Yep. Uh, do what it is now. <laughs> but that's it. Mario 64 is dope. Moving on. Custom R says, <laughs> I like that I get to have the last word on a lot of things because I'm reading the comments. <laughs> but also because like, I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah, like, ex- I, yeah exactly. It's like, that's your opinion and that's fine. <laughs> yes. Next. I, similarly, yeah. I would exactly. The other way around. Uh, Custom R right. says, I'm not really in need for Nintendo Switch Online. Yes, you are. No, I'm joking. 
But I want to see them get 64 and GameCube so that F0X and GX finally get to be access, or accessed by others. Falcon's ears just... I was going to say, or <laughs> is this really Falcon writing in? Uh, who's to say? Just not under... Continue on. Uh, they just use the NES one too much, and if this is how they're trying to gauge interest in the series, that's not the best way of introducing F Zero to people currently. Number one, three D F Zero is heavily represented in games like Smash and to some extent Mario Kart. Number two, SNES F Zero has only has been on six consoles already. I say though, even if the three D games finally return, I wouldn't see much need for it. I've already exhausted every game in the series, and not one offering for anti grav racing has come close to giving me what I'm looking for. Either that, or it usually remains still early access, like Super Pilot. Seeing three D F Zero on Nintendo Switch Online will boost my feeling to Switch and morale, but. I'd rather see a new 3D entry in this series. Nintendo has other racing series than Mario Kart. It's been high time they use it. Yeah. Uh, they kind of talked about that a little bit in their financial report, how they like the expansion and using their IP more and all that other stuff. In this last one? I didn't see that. Yeah. One, if so. um, but it was more, it was like more in reference to the stuff that they're doing with their IP outside of games. So, and also using okay. their like their mobile properties to introduce people to their mm -hmm. IP and stuff yeah. like that. So like, I mean, you may, you may not like it, but maybe next time we see F-Zero, it's through a mobile game and you're going to have yeah, to bite right. that bullet because that could be the, 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 the entry mm -hmm. point to a whole nother F-Zero game on console. You never know. Hmm. I think that's just really going to depend on how people respond to it on yep. the whole, right? Because like if people... If, if the ground floor F-Zero people are like, this is a mobile game, this isn't what I wanted, I hate this, right? <laughs> yeah. And that bleeds into, which I doubt that it would, because like the mobile market doesn't really care what we think, you know? Yeah. Like a mobile game is going to succeed or not. Uh, that was that is always the funny thing listening to because I listen to other Nintendo podcasts and I was listening to the NVC and they were talking about the mobile games and stuff. Um, and they were saying, I don't remember what specifically, but you know, just that like, they f didn't like the way that they did the mobile games things. And it wasn't like particularly negative. It was just like, I, we just, I don't like it. Um, and they didn't do those well and stuff. Um, specifically in the monetary aspect where I'm like, yeah, again, I've said this before here, but we're coming from a console gamer perspective and for just mobile gamers, a lot of them are like, yeah, sure, that's fine. I'm either going to ignore it or I'm going to pay for it. You know and what it's like normal. to me? Like, you whatever. know what it's like to me? Mm -hmm. It's like us as adult human beings saying, baby food ain't that great. Exactly. Like, yeah, yes. uh-huh, right. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> right. But it has its Babies seem to be fine. It has its audience, you know? Yeah. Babies mm -hmm. like it. <laughs> so, yep. Uh, surprise, babies are actually asking for bacon all the time. Let, let um, babies have their baby food, and then they'll work their way up to the steak that you want. You That's know? so true. That's all um, I'm saying. Yeah. But yeah, F Zero, custom art, good comment. Um, F Zero, it does seem like I wonder if just SNES F Zero has been is is just their best received one probably i guess and so that's why they feel like this is the one that we're going to push because not the it's other ones their best selling one <laughs> right probably i mean i haven't looked I'd at the be numbers a, but i'd almost imagine. most definitely like i'm like yeah. 90% sure <laughs> i would imagine so um i'm going to look it up real quick falcon if he can't find it let us know in the comments yep uh, I mean, I could probably find it, but it might take longer than yeah, just looking right. it up right now, so I'm not going to bother. Just we can assume that you are correct. I think just ballpark. Yeah. Like, very least, the SNES one sold like 4 to 5 million, and then mm -hmm. the GameCube one did like 2.5 million. And N64 I think that's did somewhere even, around there. I think that might be uh, overstating it by a yeah. lot for, uh -huh. for um, the GameCube. Yeah, it's 1.5 on oh, the GameCube yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, selling. It so it might be two. It might be like going down like that, like four to five on the SNES, then like two and a half on N64, and then like one and a half on uh, yep. GameCube. That is very likely. I'm seeing if I can just, to round this out, find... That's okay, nice. yeah, sold 2.85 million on the SNES. Oh, so, whoa, rip, dude. Yeah, that's why they yeah. make it. I would have thought yeah. that it made, uh, sold way more than that, but it's, what, <laughs> it's, the, it's still the best selling one, though, right? 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. that's definitely the best selling one. I mean, unless F Zero X on the N sixty four sold more, but there's no. Yeah, I doubt way. it. No. Um. Yeah, man. It is funny. Like I was going back. Uh, what video was that for? Two weeks ago, I was looking at the GameCube charts for some reason for whatever video I was making. Mm-hmm. Um. And it is just crazy how not that great a lot of GameCube videos, I mean, GameCube games, like, so the top five GameCube games, Super Smash Bros. Melee with 7 million, Double Dash with 7 million as well, Sunshine, 6.3 million, and then next up, Luigi's Mansion at 3.6, Animal Crossing at 3.15, and then after Wind Waker at 3.07 million, everything else is less than 3 million which is Rip. like not a ton if we're Rip. being honest you know there's like what they they have that figure on their uh their briefing whereas like 11 of their games sold more than 10 million units or something crazy like that yeah exactly like that's insane <laughs> wait 11 uh, 11 the... sold 6 million or more on the switch specifically okay yeah yeah 6 million uh yeah for sure because the and it was like six sold more than 10 or something yeah, that sounds about right. Because it would be Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, uh, Link's Awakening, no, Link's Awakening, uh, Breath of the Wild, Smash, yeah, six. I yep. didn't count all of them, but I did my head. But yeah, look at that. That's uh, yeah, that's not great. That's crazy. No, like the GameCube felt like it did. It's funny because I feel like it was just so popular in like a, a certain culture or whatever. Um, it was but, a cult classic. It had a lot of great games. So, like, a lot of people talked about it. You know, yeah. like, everybody knows what Melee is because Melee is just, like, right. you know, it's dope. Um, but it just didn't. Not everybody bought it. They just played yeah. it at their friend's house. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Weird. All right. I so did. That. I had the Melee and the GameCubes. I had a GameCubes, but I didn't get it until later. See, and it's your fault. <laughs> it is. Well, my parents wouldn't. It was when we moved back to the U.S., blah, blah, blah. And I, st- were like, I still say it's your fault. You weren't persuasive enough. You didn't pull I, up the PowerPoint. You didn't start making spreadsheets <laughs> and stuff. Uh, yep. I was telling my parents. So my parents are have left now. They've gone other places. But they were here for like a month. I was talking to my mom about the YouTube channel and stuff. And uh, she was like, I like my past self would be kicking yourself if she knew that you were like, doing things with video games now just in the sense oh, of like, not like getting you more video games and kind stuff. of not i guess not even kicking herself i don't remember what exactly she said but something to the effect of like she didn't really like video games and didn't want me playing that much of them but it was like mm. it's fine like it's it's all right but like i just don't want that to be all he spends his time on and stuff right um so you know she wanted me to do other things but then now ironically like if this ends up ever becoming like my full-time job she was like that would just be so ironic to my past self and she was like i mean that'd be awesome like fully support it but just very funny considering i was like yep that would be way to go mom way to not support <sighs> games well just, kidding. just me being me mm-hmm. is not an if it's a way <laughs> <laughs> uh so Past Parker's mom, I'm sorry, slash, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. I think she would say you're welcome, too. Um, but, yeah, any last thoughts on your video before we move on to the comments for mine? Uh, you know, do it, you know? So true. I mean, it's bound to happen. I feel like N64 and GameCube's coming, but it's just a question of also when, not if, but the when is probably in quite a My while. My best friend <laughs> Reggie said that they wanted to get GameCube on Wii U, and they never did it. They never did it. I legitimate like my real guess would be we get N64 games this year or next and then GameCube games the next year or the following one, which is like <laughs> so far away from the console's actual launch, but whatever. Okay, um, comments for my video. I, I mostly, okay, the video was should you buy a Switch in 2020? Um, people maybe hey, watched you, it, maybe you they didn't. You're being a pessimist the whole time. You're like, this, I don't think this feels going to do good. And I'm like, I'm telling you. <laughs> Uh, it's going to do fine, and then it might do significantly better than fine down the road. <laughs> it is funny, though, because the comments that I pulled, I mean, like, a number of comments were just people, you know, you guys being like, yep, you should get it, because, like, you obviously did, and you enjoyed it, and had a good time. So mostly I picked the negative ones, because it's more interesting, or at least the, like, middling kind of ones or mm. questions. So this first one, we kind of talked about it earlier, um, but it's more of a question than a comment, I suppose. But it's Dhruv Gillot. I said that really wrong. I apologize. 
said, I have a question. What if Nintendo, what if a Nintendo Switch Pro releases soon and I buy the Nintendo Switch just before the release date? This is my main concern. Otherwise, I'm fully ready to get a Nintendo Switch ASAP. Thanks, 3000 plus, and then a bunch of emojis. Um, I think you'll be fine. And there's, I mean, there's a lot of stores like Best Buy. I know used to have a program like this where it's mm-hmm. like, you're protected, you're future proof. Just take, you take in your freaking thing and then upgrade it for the new thing for like, uh, you know, a uh, small fee yeah. relative to buying a whole new thing. Like maybe you pay them like 50 bucks or yeah. whatever, right? If it's within a certain time frame. Mm-hmm. Um, so you could do something like that. If it is like, you know, what a lot of people's nightmare scenario seems to be where it's like, what if it comes out the week after? It's like, no, mm-hmm. you're just fine at any store. At that point. <laughs> yeah. Just bring it back and then get the new one. And then it's like nothing ever happened. Now, I think- if you're like, if you're like a couple months removed or whatever, at that point, it's like, well, it kind of I- paid for itself unless you didn't touch it at all. Right. Know? I mean, that. at that point, yeah, just trade it in and you'll get, especially within the first little bit, they have their trade in values are pretty good when a new thing comes out so that you upgrade because they want you to do that. Yeah. Cause I got my switch at launch mm-hmm. and then the b- upgraded battery switch came out or whatever. And then yeah. I traded in my old switch and paid like 50 bucks yeah. out of pocket and yeah. got the new one. So I was like, you know? So, and, and I, I responded to the comment too and pretty much said, I mean, so that kind of thing, like if it does happen that way, then like, yep, those there's things you could do that should make it be pretty painless. But then otherwise, chances are at this point, we've been waiting around. I mean, I said this at the top of the show, but like we've been waiting around for a Switch Pro for like three years now, it feels like that it's been talked about like, oh, it's going to happen at some point. So at that point, like it could, it could come out later this year. It could come out in a couple months, but chances are it's we can't just expect when it's going to happen. So like no use really waiting around for it. Just, you know, have a good old time. And, uh, you know, if it's something you have the money for now and you're not going to go bankrupt buying a switch or, you know, not have groceries or something like that, like wait until you've got more money or something. But then otherwise, if you want it, just go ahead and do it and then you'll figure it out later, (laughs) which is great financial advice. I mean, honestly, that is kind of the way things work though. That's my thought. AJ is being completely silent. I'm reading Max's tweet. I want to read it in the Q&A segment. It's okay. not a Q&A, but he, he did a little rant. <laughs> was it in response it. to the one that you responded no, to? Something, well, kind of. Okay. We're doing a Q&A. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm curious. Um, okay, this next question or this next comment is very long, but I think it's also quite interesting. Um, so here we go. Nikki Scott said, Well, I'm in a strange position with getting a Switch, namely a Switch Lite, because that's the one that I prefer getting. Thanks to my dad, I finally got a job around August of 2019, and obviously that means I can buy a Switch for myself, which I plan on doing maybe sometime this year. But it's just a few things with the Switch that are completely backwards from previous generations that I wish just wasn't the case. I hate the fact that drift is an issue for some folks, regardless of whatever Switch you decide to get as of making this comment. And it's pretty sad that I have to worry about that when I when uh, buying a game system from Nintendo when I didn't have to worry about something like that back in the Wii U and Nintendo 3DS days. But it's mainly because of the fact that the Switch for me right now isn't as exciting as opposed to the system's first year. The last time I truly was excited for something Switch related was during the hype train for Smash Ultimate and when Ultimate Alliance 3 was coming. And thankfully, I've heard many good things about that game. Maybe it's just me being spoiled from the Wii U and 3DS era, considering that I became a fan of Nintendo around that time and many things in that generation felt exciting to me, but I don't know. In that generation, we didn't have to ask for folders, home menu themes, native voice chat, a better online service, though I know some would disagree with that, but at least it was free. Cloud saves or any other way to officially back up your save data locally without it being tied behind a paywall. Virtual console would come back, a better rewards program because my Nintendo just ain't cutting it for me. A better way to add friends your friend to your friends list because I don't know what uh, person asked for friend codes to come back, etc. I'm not a big online playing person anyway, and the Switch's online service still sucks in my opinion. Nintendo still hasn't got rid of that ridiculous voice chat app. I know not all games use it, but still, Nintendo still hasn't found a way to found a way to completely f- kill this Joy-Con drift issue. Just ah. We got some great games coming for the platform for the remainder of this year and beyond, but it's still pretty strange that I don't have a Switch at all, but I'm perfectly content with just sticking with my Wii U and Nintendo 3DS for the time being. 
No joke, it feels like this generation so far, Nintendo has been doing a few things right, but many obvious things wrong when some of these same issues were completely addressed last gen. I'm not trying to sound like a mope or whatever, but I can't help it. I have lots of thoughts. <laughs> um, I mean, to sum up all my thoughts, if that's how you feel, then you're in a good place, right? Like, don't buy it. <laughs> if you don't feel obligated or compelled to buy this with what's on offer and you haven't bought it, mm-hmm. don't. And just stay that way until you do, right? Like, mm-hmm. there's no need to uh, feel... Uh, and I don't want to say it because I don't think he's being entitled but mm-hmm. to feel entitled to them having all these things that makes you want to buy the mm-hmm. Switch, right? Like, you didn't buy it, so it's fine. You did the thing that consumers can do. Mm-hmm. You said, what is on offer is not what I want, so I'm not going to buy it. Yeah. Don't buy it and just stay where you're at. <laughs> yeah. Unless or until they do. Agreed. So, yes, that. Um, I think, so the, to sum up my thoughts, I think... Yeah, the big thing is... I mean, you is, could say all your thoughts. I summed up my thoughts because you said you had thoughts. And this oh, is yeah, no, I know. I just go wild. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to be so wild, like the <laughs> Thornberry level wild. Oh, my. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, for anybody who didn't get that, interesting that you didn't get that and didn't have a childhood. Um, so... Interesting that you were <laughs> born in the 90s. Yeah, it really is what it is. Um. I think, yeah, if, if the games aren't speaking to you, that's the main thing, for one thing. Like, if, you, if the games aren't something that you want and the hardware isn't something that you want, then there's nothing that's something that you want, and that's perfectly fine. Um, the only thing I'll say per, with pretty much all of the... Besides the Joy-Con drift, like, that's one that, like, does suck that that's a thing. There's, lot, there's ways around it, I would mm-hmm. say, at least in my experience. Like, I have... <laughs> I have a set of Joy-Cons right now that I've been playing with for the past probably month or two that I bought actually right here. I've got in this bag, I've got replacement joysticks um, that I have yet to actually install. Ta-da, there it is. Um, But yeah, one of my Joy-Cons says Joy-Con Drift and I've just been dealing with it for the past two months or so because I just don't really care and it hasn't affected me that bad. It's just a bit of a nuisance. So that. But besides that, pretty much all of the other things, in my opinion at least, are things, it's kind of the 80-20 rule or something, uh, some rule like that, where if you have 80% of the thing you want, you're going to talk about the 20% of stuff that you don't have or something like that. Um, Mm. Or at least in this case, that's anecdotally, whether that's what the rule actually is or not, that's what I think is going on here. Yeah, the people that talk about all these things actually wish i mean like myself i'd love for there to be folders i wish there would be more themes cool that would be awesome but i only talk about those things because it's the things that are holding it back from being all every single thing that i want it to be but it's it really day to day doesn't change my life at all i and i mean for the most for the most part that's like human nature it's like yeah exactly the sort of thing of like how people talk about like with influencers and Mm -hmm. stuff like that it's like you have hundreds if not thousands of positive comments but you see those three negative ones and that's what you're fixated on right um and i feel that and i empathize with it sympathize Mm -hmm. with it what's the one that i'm more detached i don't know Uh, Uh, because like I I look uh-huh. at that on both sides where I'm like, ah, eh, it's not really how I look at it, right? Like people say negative stuff about me all the time. And if anything, I'll like laugh it off or like yeah. I'll show it to somebody and they'll have a complete different reaction mm-hmm. from what I did. And I'm like, well, I, I didn't think it was that's it. like something racist. Like every seven months or something, mm-hmm. I might get a racist comment. And then I'll show it to one of my friends and be like, hey, look at how stupid this is. And everyone's mm-hmm. like, terrible. Why would they say that to you? You, you should report them to YouTube. Their account mm-hmm. should get deleted and blah, blah. I'm like, Man, I just thought it was kind of <laughs> funny that somebody would say that to you. like just like out in the yeah. open say something like that. Mm-hmm. And that's what that's what this situation is to me, yeah. where it's like, I mean, I guess it would be cool if there was folders. I think mm-hmm. that that one less specifically applies to me because I don't even think I would use it if we had right. It. Yeah. Um. I but definitely. like, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, yeah, that that would be cool. But like, I, since it's not something that's in the day to day and not yeah. something that is like. Uh, central to literally mm-hmm. any console, even the ones that have it. Yeah. Uh, I just don't care. It's like, th- if it's there, it's there. If it's not, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> I think like it might be easiest to think of it in the context of if the Switch had yet to come out and we knew all the things about it that we know, all the games that are out and stuff like that, the, co- the discourse around it would be vastly different than now that it already 
is out. Right. Because again, like all the people that are talking about these things, 99% of them are people that already have a switch. So again, are fine, like, like, or love or feel okay about I think, things. I that think do- Nintendo is operating in the same way that they did when switch launched. Mm-hmm. They're coasting by the strength of their games. They're mm-hmm. saying, you buy this because Breath of the Wild, and that's all it is. It's like your iPad doesn't have freaking menu music. <laughs> yeah. Right? So why should we? The mm-hmm. things that matter on your iPod, iPad are the apps. And I mean, to be fair, they have backgrounds on iPad. Right, but how yeah. long did it take for that to happen? Mm-hmm. You know? Well, iPad had it at launch, but like iPhone went like 60 years or something like that before they oh. added it. It was like iOS 4 or something. That's crap. weird. Yeah, iOS 4 was like when they <laughs> added backgrounds to the iPhone. Yeah. Um, so I think that that's how Nintendo's mm-hmm. approaching it, where it's like we're function first mm-hmm. and maybe we'll slowly add the like, mm-hmm. you know, the style part of it. Yeah. But yeah, I think I that's all exactly true. And these are all things that I would surmise are things that the people that are talking about them don't really care about them as much as it's there's a lot of little things there but i don't think most of the people care about them as much as is there as not, much as it seems they're like. not serious for deterrence like they are yeah. for uh this mm-hmm. for nikki scott right? right like for him it's like nah i'm out man and they don't have that and that's fine <laughs> yeah. but yeah. for everybody else it's like well the 80 to 20 rule they're like yeah. well 80 percent got me here but i'm still mad about that 20 right yeah exactly and you can you know be as mad about the 20 percent as you want to be but whether it's justified or not is, I guess, another question. Yeah, that's um, the arguable part. Yeah, so it's interesting stuff for sure. But um, yeah, I, maybe the, in any case, Nikki, maybe that helps you recontextualize some of when you hear YouTubers specifically talking about these things. A, like YouTube is built for clicks, and that's like we we try to we specifically try to uh, do yeah, it in the nicest way possible. We're that's not like, going to make a video to try to get your clicks by using the, the no. reaction that we think you want. Right. Right. Like, I think that that's what a lot of YouTubers do and you'll yep. see it because like, there'll be a video where it's like X game sucks. Right. And then if the community reacts in the opposite way, like they're not, like, mm-hmm. it's not a confirmation bias for them. <laughs> you'll see a lot of YouTubers backtrack and say, I didn't really think that, you know, like uh-huh. after playing it three seconds, I realized I, <laughs> Love that you know, like that sort of thing. That's not you're never going to see that from us, yeah. Because if we say something, it's like, This is how I feel about this in this moment, here's mm-hmm. why. And then if we do change our minds, here's why we change our minds. And it was after meditation, and, you know, like <laughs> on our own self. We don't really, yeah. and, and that way, like we, we read feedback as you yeah. see on the comments and we take mm-hmm. that into consideration, but that's not going to sway us. No. more than our own personal thoughts probably the only thing that would make it sound it, our our titles would say words probably like need and deserve and perfect yeah. whatever more often than like you and know again, i don't really I mean, think the switch is... like needs folders but like for it to be the switch that i want it to be yeah it would need folders you know what i mean and, and that's see I think that it does, but it doesn't in the way that a lot of people look okay, at it also when, true, yes when they see it like that right because like when you say man I need some cookies right now, right? <laughs> you don't actually need cookies, but yeah. you do, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, not yeah. everything, ha- it's kind of like that sour thing, yeah. right? When I say like an orange is sour, it's not the most sour thing I've ever tasted in my life. This but to like, some degree, I, I do need that, you know? Five or six episodes pers- in a row. <laughs> my personal satisfaction, I need this thing, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. It, it's all context. You it know? is. Indeed. So, but yeah, good comment in any case. It was interesting to think through and so curious how that progresses. If anything changes that, whatever. Nikki, let us know as it keeps going. Um, Next comment. This one <laughs> was also an interesting, a bit of a roller coaster because I <laughs> responded to the comment and then Jay said more things back to that. And so it was like kind of up and down. Very fun time to read. So <laughs> to, I guess to the question of should you buy a Switch in 2020, Jay says, no, not really, all caps. I bought mine about eight months ago, went all out on the eShop indies and pre-ordered Mario Maker 2 with online after seeing the sales, history on Deku deals, lack of support. Um, hang on. I think, okay, I, I think they're at some point phrasing, let me reread. So went all out on the eShop and pre-ordered Mario Maker 2 with online. 
After seeing the sales, history on Deku deals, lack of support, and lack of forward thinking about everything but money by Nintendo, I'm jaded and pretty bummed about almost everything except many of the wonderful indie games that are on offer. Don't get me wrong, I love a lot of the main IPs and having a con- and having a console on the play to go, but suggest to play on the go. To play on the go. I don't know what I said, but that on the uh, play to go. <laughs> <laughs> on the plane to go. Come on, of course. Uh, but suggest you do not buy anything for full price or on release. Sales are always coming, and there are plenty of cheap yet lovely games to get you through the holidays. I guess it's been a lesson, a lesson of patience. But did I need a switch for that? LOL. Um, and then, like again, after I said something, he responded some more and said some different things. So it, it sounds like, in general, he's landed on like. It's it's been good, but like I wish that I didn't done some stuff differently. I, that what kind it of sounds thing. like to me is this is less of a like uh, not liking the thing on mm-hmm. offer and more of just generally being the type of person that doesn't buy things at full price. Or yeah, I mean buyer's remorse because of context and stuff of you know like oh I did want this game, but I paid $60 for it. And if I had waited two more weeks, I would have paid $40 for it and stuff like that, which I will say. It doesn't even look like that's the case because what he, like, it looks like he's saying like Nintendo, like they don't put games on sale. I mm-hmm. bought this because I have other platforms or whatever mm-hmm. or whatever, where uh, like games do regularly go on price. Mm-hmm. Whereas on Nintendo platforms, they generally don't unless right. they sell poorly and then they'll drop the price. Mm-hmm. Um, and since they don't do that, now I'm like upset because I assume that they would mm-hmm. and they didn't. Right. Um, less so than like I bought this and then a month later, Mario Odyssey is now forty five dollars in perpetuity or whatever, mm-hmm. right? Because it's not. Yeah. <laughs> um. So like, and that also is fine. I feel like your th- this comment is more so the the bad timeline of Nikki's situation <laughs> where. In reality, he Jay should have just said no, right? And just not bought it. Uh-huh. <laughs> but unfortunately, he bought it. And now mm-hmm. he's in this situation where either he went forever for a sale mm-hmm. or he just bites the bullet and pays the $60 for mm-hmm. the game or whatever. Yeah, uh, I think, I mean, I was talking in, um, in the Discord yesterday with a bunch of people. And I want to say it was Cowboy that was saying um, just that like, you know, he budgets out and around Christmas, he might get a couple more games, but generally like buys one $60 game every three months and that kind of thing. And that's really like, I, I've done a pretty good job of not spending that much of my own money on switch games. I mean, outside of now though with fanatics for cause review copies and stuff like that. But for the most part, like waiting, getting birthday presents, getting games for presents or Amazon gift cards and stuff like that. Um, but I think it is really easy to be like, oh, I'll just get this game and this game and this game. And it adds up really quick if you're, if you're not careful. So then I could definitely see, especially with if you have a lot of games, because I'll do a lot of research before the games that I get because I want it to be something that's actually going to be worth it. Um, that's why I ended up getting Diablo 3 for like $9 because it was on sale for like, I don't know, 30 or something at some point. And then I had gold points or something, whatever it was. Um, I guess because just, I, just for me, like even mm-hmm. removed from video games, like being yeah. my job right. and getting a lot of games for free and stuff like that, even the games, I would say the games that I get for free, I think about even more than, or that I ask for for free or accept, yeah. like not just them emailing me a code and it's like, well, they're not going to take this bag. Right. Like, yeah. If I had to say yes or no to a game, mm-hmm. I think more about accepting or not accepting that than I would if I paid for it. Mm-hmm. because to me it's like well then i gotta make content and then they, mm-hmm. they're expecting return on investment in some way and then yeah you know, that whole thing yeah. um but for the games that i bought even before this it was a thing of like okay well this is 60 dollars. how much time am i going to spend on this mm-hmm. it didn't become a, it, it wasn't really a deterrent in that way where it's like well this money's going to add mm-hmm. up it's like well i'm spending money on something i'm not going to play <laughs> yeah and i think that games become a lot less expensive once you're honest with yourself in that way right Mm -hmm. where it's like okay um yeah nintendo released breath of the wild and super smash brothers ultimate and freaking mario odyssey and Mm -hmm. mario kingdom battle mario puts rabbits kingdom battle and Mm -hmm. like luigi's mansion 3 and all this stuff are you going to play all of this in one month no (laughs) so why buy it all at once yeah buy it finish it, buy another, if Mm -hmm. you're concerned about price and all that stuff, right? Because there's a a ton of games that I've planned. I was like, I'm probably going to get that eventually. And then by the time it got to a 
point where I could have a backlog, you know, finished up to play it or whatever. I can't think of specific examples, but um, yeah, there's just some games that I'm like, that one interests me. And like, maybe if I have some downtime later, I'll pick it up and play it. And then it got to my downtime later. I'm like, eh, I'm glad I didn't pick it up. I didn't care that yeah. much about it. And so like, I think having maybe that kind of timeline is ends up being helpful as far as, yeah, not like buying a ton of stuff at once and then regretting it. And I think when you consume the type of stuff that like we make often, mm-hmm. right? It almost feels like you have to buy it when everybody's mm-hmm. talking, especially like the single player stuff. But like you don't <laughs> like you know, like especially yeah. for us, we're not going to spoil the game for you. So like yeah. if you want, uh, and if if it is going to be something that is like spoiled, it's going to be obvious, right? Like we're going to talk about stuff that happens towards the end of Pokemon Sword and Shield in a video called Pokemon Sword and Shield Spoiler Cast, or yeah. about the Pokemon uh, Crown Tundra DLC, right? Like we're going to mention stuff that happens towards the end of Sword and Shield because. Mm-hmm that contextualize, yeah. contextualizes the DLC, right? Um, but you're not going to click on the video and just be like, well, that just was a game that I didn't get a chance to play <laughs> or that I didn't yeah. buy it because I know I can't play it or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just like, A, I would suggest yeah. just not buying stuff that you don't have mm-hmm. time to play or the money to play even. Yep. Uh, and B, avoid content that's going to, or creators even entirely, mm-hmm. that are going to create content around uh, games in that way that you mm-hmm. haven't gotten to, yep. Or just the type of creators that like all they do, like the game explains where it's like, okay, we're gonna up upload the ending of this game or whatever, right? right? And then you mm-hmm. see the final boss in the thumbnail, yeah. and that's more than you wanted to see or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Um, avoid stuff like that. Yeah. That Which um, yeah, exactly. As it um, <laughs> the la- going back to to the last sentence that he said. Uh, I guess it's been a lesson in patience, but did I need a switch for that? LOL. Honestly, maybe not in the sense that yes, it needed to be a switch, but like, I know for me, I learned this kind of a lesson in, in high school. We had like a, uh, I don't know, kind of like a Walgreens sort of a thing or like a slash deli sort of thing that, that was on the same block as our school. So it was considered on campus. So we could go there on like lunch breaks and stuff like that um, to buy things. And so I had, some amount of allowance and I would go a lot of days and just buy just a little thing here and there. But then my whole allowance would have been gone by the end of the month because I'd just been spending it on all of these little things. And at some point that was my switch in this case of like learning like, Oh, that's okay. Little bits of money add up to things quickly. Um, so I need to like prioritize how I want to spend money, blah, 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 you know, that kind of thing. So sometimes I think for people, there might need to be some kind of thing for you to learn that lesson. Um, but I mean, everybody's individual lessons are going to be different for everybody else. So maybe at the end of this, Jay, anyway, you're like, ah, whatever, I'll just do things a different way. And that's fine too. So it's not a big deal, but, uh, curious how that all continues and whatnot and which of those games too that were the ones that you liked uh last question or last comment on this video and then we'll move into the q a is from jordan de best who says my joy con is actually stiff instead of drifting it's annoying oh and if you decide to get to it later the games might be nintendo selects um that's true so that's uh, that is an interesting thing yeah because i mentioned like is it worth getting it now or like later down the road uh and you know kind of the like this way, at least, if you get it sooner rather than later, you can enjoy it for longer, which is true. But again, if you wait later, maybe there's going to be an Nintendo but Switch. I mean, but then again, again, maybe I, they don't, don't even, even do that. I don't even know if that's true. Like, if you're the type of person, uh, like it sounds like Jay, for instance, is right, mm-hmm. where he's still enjoying his Wii U. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, right. It's, it wouldn't be longer. You just started enjoying it at a different point in time. Like, if yeah. I buy my Switch in 2019, I mm-hmm. enjoy it until freaking 2015. I mean, 2025. Yeah. It's not any different from somebody that bought it in 2017. Yeah. And I played Twilight like Princess for the first time in 2016. So, like, <laughs> that's a real there thing. Played Super Mario Sunshine for the first time in 2017. So, like, yeah, that's just... It's fine. Um, but, yeah, that that is something to potentially take into consideration as a Nintendo Select thing. But also, we don't know that they're happening for sure, although there's good precedent that they would. So who's, who's really to say? Um, so then that's just up to you. P- personal preference, I guess, of whether you'd rather wait and find out or go ahead and get it now. Um, but everything's personal preference along this line anyway, so who cares? <laughs> and all that stuff. Okay, 
that's it for my video. I don't have any else, anything else to add other than, hey, if feel this is an easy one to share with friends if you want to. Very much you don't have to. But if you have a friend that's like, I don't know if I should go to Switch, just send them this video and they'll be like, that was a weird guy, but maybe I'll get a Switch. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, Q&A. Um, do you want me to share my screen for this comment? Sure. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> follow Max on Twitter, everybody. <laughs> There you go. Here we go. Here's Max. Um, Max is a good. We, I like Max. Yeah. But here he said this. <laughs> Rant. I've had three friends buy Switches recently. All have asked to borrow my games because after three years of the, after three years, the entire library is close to full price. Nintendo Switch is 100% the most expensive system. There's a huge library of great games that just isn't that accessible. Even if you wanted to buy the three biggest Switch games from 2017 pre-owned, you're looking at over 120 pounds for three games. If you bought a PS4 now and wanted to catch up on the four best exclusives from 2016 to 2018 pre-owned, it would cost you 60 pounds, probably even cheaper in digital sales. I get the Switch games hold their value and it's great for those of us who might end up selling our system in the future, but the average person can't buy a Switch and catch up on the system's best games without spending double the cost of the console alone. Even games that didn't do that well, like Star Kirby Star Allies and ARMS are 30 to $40 or pounds pre-owned. Skyrim and Doom are 40 pounds or more. Nintendo doesn't even support Splatoon 2 anymore, or with content anymore, and it's 40 pounds. And there we go. Okay, so... I mean, this is basically just a case of the haves and the have nots, right? <laughs> Where it's like, I mean, yeah, that sucks, dude. That that uh, people that bought a Switch don't want to spend that much money and it still costs that much and blah, blah, blah. And a lot of stuff that we already touched on with this. But mm -hmm. like even like with his last example, right? Kirby Star Allies and ARMS not selling well. They both sold more than 2 million units each. Like that's a lot, especially for games that mm -hmm. allegedly are too expensive right mm -hmm. so even if they drop the price in half if they if they did the whole uncharted 4 thing and i could just go to gamestop and buy it for 15 dollars, mm -hmm. how much profit are they going to make on that like if kirby star right now right if i never played kirby star mm -hmm. allies and they drop the price in our money in american money bro <laughs> no i'm joking uh because <laughs> i know he's gonna be like what cost is it? i don't really care uh if they if they if they slice kirby star allies price uh -huh. in the half that's not going to make me want to play kirby star allies because the game is just not worth that at that point yeah. right like right. the games that they say this is how much it's worth and then it stays at that worth for a long time that's mm -hmm. because people are still buying it in enough quantity that it's making them money Mm -hmm. because again nintendo is not trying to be your friend they're not trying to say hey those other guys are doing it so we're going to do it too and mm -hmm. in fact they're trying to do the opposite of that so they see that playstation's like well we're the bargain bin people dude like just come on over just bring five bucks and you'll have a great time for months right uh -huh. nintendo's like no we're a premium product and that's just you know that's how it's going to be mm -hmm. and that's how they see themselves they their inspiration is apple whereas playstation maybe wants to be more walmart right mm -hmm. um and yeah you know it sucks if you don't want to spend a lot of money but like that doesn't mean that what they're doing isn't smart because if you look at their financial uh results <laughs> it's very much so smart it's just unfortunate for people that you know yeah. don't want to buy in which is i think i mean and it it might make sense with why i mean i think nintendo would be doing it regardless but with why they're so close to indie studios now is knowing that like, oh, those are the things where we can recommend that people come in and can buy a whole bunch of things with very little money right. um, just because it's cheaper on that front. But I mean, I think, yeah, it's, it's, it's an all or nothing sort of thing. Either you're a company that just keeps the price up there because people are paying it or you're one that reduces everything and because otherwise then people are going to not buy, like with, in this case, people know Nintendo games are going to stay 60 bucks, might as well just buy it at 60 bucks or wait for a small sale, like, you know, a seasonal sale, which those are also going to happen, not for every single game, but you know, you could buy Breath of the Wild for $45 Black Friday or something like that. Um, but for the most part, this way, it means somebody sees it for $60 and is like, I'm going to have to pay that regardless. Whereas if God of War were $60 still and Horizon Zero Dawn was $9, people would be like, well, I'm not going to buy well, God of War right now exactly. because it's going to get discounted anyway. Exactly. So it's, it's sort of a precedent thing. Um, 
and I don't know that there's a way to change it. And but I agree I that it I, I, it I sucks think, on your wallet, but like right. it kind of is just like it is what it is at the same time. So I think that there's two when it comes to consumer uh, facing companies, right? Where what they mm-hmm. do is they sell you things. There's two different uh, philosophies. There's the customer is always right. Mm-hmm. And then there's the customer doesn't know what they want until we show it to them, <laughs> right? And yeah. that is where Nintendo's at. They don't yeah. they don't feel like you're always right. That's why mm-hmm. Splatoon doesn't let you do custom matchmaking and like all mm-hmm. that crap. Like it's because they feel like they're giving you the experience that you came there for. And 9.6 million people or whatever <laughs> said, "Yeah, dude, I'm down." You know, yeah. And that's who you really need to take it up with, you know, because like. That's what Nintendo's barometer is. It's mm-hmm. not freaking uh, the 200 people or whatever that tweet Game Freak every time they post anything. When Masuda's is like, hey, man, I got a new cat. Everybody's like, <laughs> hashtag bring back the national decks. They don't care about what those people uh-huh. are saying. They care about the 16 million people that bought the game. So you got to take it up with those people that are apparently buying this like unplayable product or Mm -hmm. like paying too much in quotes for this game. You know, like the market says the game costs way more than you think it should. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. Yeah. Nintendo is a a business. They're not your friend. (laughs) You know, like if, if, if it was me and you Parker, right. If we're, I'm one of those people. Exactly. If we're trying to freaking, you know, like Max knows that our our phone has a hole in it, right? And we're trying to sell him this <laughs> phone for freaking retail price. Mm-hmm. That's something that you could say, like, oh man, that's messed up. I'm your friend. Like you shouldn't mm-hmm. be trying to like, you know, uh, nickel and dime me like that or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. But Nite- they, they don't have that. They're not beholden to you in that way. They say, here's the thing, take it or leave it. <laughs> So many people are taking it that they don't care if you specifically want to leave it. <laughs> uh-huh. But you have that choice. This just in, leave it. <laughs> every game has a phone-sized hole in it. Yeah. AJ said so. Yep. It's hurtful. Yes. <laughs> but basically what I'm saying <laughs> yeah, is, yeah. As on, a, on a person-to-person basis, mm-hmm. if I'm trying to rip you off and you know that I'm ripping you off, yeah. then you saying, like, this is a rip-off, this isn't fair, has merit. But when it's this corporation that exists yeah. to make money and nothing else, mm-hmm. it just kind of falls yeah. on deaf ears, right? Like, cause that's yeah, and I think at that point, that is, I mean, kind of goes back to some of the things we were saying before, just as far as like, it's a question of how you will then want to manage that for yourself. Right. Um, and then that also doesn't mean that you have to particularly like it because like yeah. i think i think and what max is saying is like super valid in right. the sense of like it I'm sucks saying. like i think uh also like reasonable. i tweeted something about uh game freak uh, uh so somebody from Serebi mm-hmm. tweeted that um like just because pokemon oh Shibu yeah yeah are doing mm-hmm. well that doesn't mean that they they're don't they're not going to listen to criticism the, or... yeah they hear the criticism and that they're because i mean they're literally already doing it and that's mm-hmm. basically what the gist of his tweet yeah. was and i was like yeah like we got breath of the wild even though people weren't happy with skyward sword mm-hmm. right like that could very much so be the case here mm-hmm. uh and like people weren't happy with skyward sword skyward sword still sold millions mm-hmm. as zelda games usually do <laughs> it didn't set the world on fire but that's mm-hmm. also par par for the course right uh pokemon games always sell well Mm-hmm. They always try to improve, but their barometer for how much they should improve usually is way more uh, conservative, uh, maybe. Yeah, conservative yeah. than it currently is, right? So now they're going to say, oh, shoot, okay, well, when we have the opportunity, we're going back to the drawing board and we're going to like add more. Like yeah. if they don't do that with Gen 9 or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Then that's when you're like, well, I'm not buying this game, blah, blah, <laughs> blah, because yeah. they knew this time and there's no doubt whether or not they knew. But yeah. leading into this, like, and I know from personal experience, because I talk about Pokemon <laughs> all the time. And every time I'm like, I want Pokemon to mm-hmm. just make a freaking 180 dude and become yep. a whole new game. Everybody is like, oh, I wanted to be the Game Boy games for the next 20 years. I think um, people had started saying it before the game came out, but definitely not before it started being developed. Like w- when it started being developed... Uh, like probably around the time start, Let's I Go Pikachu people, and Eevee, exactly, Eevee came exactly, out. Which is, which is like, late. it's too late. Yeah, yeah that's way too late. So even at that point, yeah. Pokemon Sword and Shield were pretty much like done. As far it was as, locked like, in the, what yeah. the direction. Like, yeah. The planning docs were done, right? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. even Sakurai, he, put, he, he has a list of characters and he's like, all right, we're not at anymore. This is the mm-hmm. planning doc. We're yeah. done <laughs> effectively, you know? Um, and that's where we're at. Yeah. It's like, and 
uh, somebody was like, uh, put memes in the, uh, like in the responses where it's like, oh, you're getting paid. And it's like, no, I'm actively, how many times in just this podcast <laughs> have I told people, yeah. do not buy thing, period. And I genuinely mean that. Please mm-hmm. do not buy it. Because I like the fact that people are uh, coming in droves and saying, I don't want to buy X, Y, and Z. I think that this should improve and blah, blah, blah. Because yep. at the end of the day, we're getting a better thing. What I take issue with is people being like toxic about it, you know, mm-hmm. um, and making it into something that it's not. Like, yes, Pokemon's not as good as it could be. Or yes, these games probably could do, uh, like they probably should be cheaper for whatever reason or whatever, right? Um, even though I less so agree with that because again, like, Mm-hmm. Freaking Mario Kart 8 Deluxe sold 22 million units. Yeah. Right. Um, it's, it's just like, it's it's just easier for me to separate my desires from what I know is just like realistic. Yeah. It'd Especially be because if Nintendo paid me $20 <laughs> per game, right? I would love that. But I know that's not realistic. Yeah. It's true. But yeah. Interesting stuff, Max. Thanks for being our friend and saying things that we can react to <laughs> and whatnot um, and taking it in stride. All right, Pitar35. This is uh, from Discord. Nobody asked yeah, For the record, this is in the shot. I just thought it was a good opportunity to one, include you, and two, it was on brand with the rest of the conversation. It's true. Yeah, it all fit in quite nicely. Yeah, and I read him saying that before, so that was... Good stuff. Um, from Discord. Timing. Just don't tweet stuff. That's perfect timing, dude. I know. If you don't want to be in the podcast. <laughs> so true. Uh, Pitar35 asks, do you think Smash, we kind of answered this earlier, do you think Smash will pass Mario Kart in sales? No. no. Sure don't. Um, I and think Smash. Smash Brothers drops down to $20. <laughs> I think Smash, where it is right now, could pass Mario Kart where it is right yeah. now. Yeah, uh-huh. But like Mario it could, Kart will sell more by then. Yes, right, exactly. And I mean, uh, yeah, in any case. Um, also, what are your predictions for the <laughs> annual February Direct? <laughs> uh, it'll be in January. Uh, the February Direct will definitely be in January. Uh, uh, 20, the, 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 the January 51st uh, yeah. <laughs> Nintendo Direct. Uh, indeed. Um, good one. Lord Commander Green, if a woodchuck could chuck wood, how much would it, how much would it chuck? I don't know. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Parker, I mean, this is Parker. Ian said something about um, woodchucks being freeloaders or something like that. No, I said um, if a woodchuck could um, pay uh, somebody to chuck wood for him. <laughs> uh, no, how much would a woodchuck pay to chuck wood for him so he can brag about it to his friends that he got a lot of work done, but he didn't really uh-huh. have to do anything? Uh, um, I don't know. What's the. Oh, you wouldn't even get this reference because it's from The Office. Yeah, we're right, dude. Uh, it's going to be shrew bucks to Stanley Nichols, everybody. That's the that's the <laughs> I was going for. So, rip, rip, Stanley Nichols. Uh, Duncan asks, "Are y'all going banana? Are y'all going as bananas for the Animal Crossing special edition as I am? Because I have absolutely no impulse control over special editions. <laughs> it looks um, nice. I yeah, I want the Joy Con. I I'm way more like if they sold the Joy Con yes. separately, I would spend." too much money but i'm not really <laughs> i think the only time that i like teeter on the edge is when it's a pokemon one yeah like i was i came very close like if i was if i like saw it at a store i would have mm-hmm. freaking pokemon sword and joke mm-hmm. yeah. switch but i just never saw it at a store at the times i went to a store so i was like yeah. all right i'm not good i have enough impulse control to not buy it on amazon because that just feels like more work to be like it does i want to spend money Yes, I want to spend money. Yes, I'm sure I want to spend money. I want to spend money to this address. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Whereas at a store, it's like, I just got to make that decision twice. It's like, I grab the box, I put it on the uh, freaking counter Mm -hmm. for the cashier to to bring it up, and then I get Mm -hmm. the money. Like, and it's true. (laughs) And then your card malfunctions, and then you have to get cash out, and then whatever. See, if that happens, then I just, at that point, I'm like, it's not meant to be. (laughs) Arceus is telling me not to get it. (laughs) <laughs> uh, so true but yeah um i yeah i don't think there i think down the road if the joy cons are out by themselves i've already got four sets see this is the thing i joy cons i have so like because the, yeah, the, the, the only way i'm getting another set is if i can get full blue that's what i want i want full yep. blue and i still don't got it the i mean of the like neon blue color because yes. i've got full blue of the neon i know <laughs> 
<laughs> I like I knew that before this, but I saw it yeah. on your videos. Like freaking as dope. <laughs> uh, yeah, there you go. It's I was like uh, adding cards to the, to the. I was like putting the end cards on. I was like freaking double blue. <laughs> it's like you think he's all cool. He's <laughs> <laughs> double blue. <laughs> uh, yeah, on his, that and the right one's the one that has the Joy-Con drift. But I'm like, I'm not taking it off. It's double. Blue. <laughs> Like that's what life is about. Uh, See, I could have did that. See, I almost had double blue yep. because I got the other set. Like I bought a new set, uh huh. And I was like, wait, I have the because I got the new for switch your new or switch. Well, did you get grays? No, or, I have. Neon. Oh, you got. Oh, okay. So, cool. for, so for my new switch, I got neon, yeah. and then I they got Joy Con drift eventually because I still was uh, playing right. Smash Brothers. Yep, on my switch and handheld mode. Mm -hmm. um but um yeah so i went in and i traded it and i was like wait i should go back and get the blue ones back and uh, freaking do that and i was like wait but that's the one that's drifting <laughs> so I just, like the, the, the double blue dream yeah. died the man. double blue dream yeah. it's so sad isn't like japan's reversed or something like that could i like uh okay. you so okay so right now what are your joy cons is it still the red and the blue yes okay if Where's you get syringe? if you just go to the store and buy a set of red and blues they're reversed from what the console is yeah but that's I already did that that's what i'm saying i traded in the oh. Joy that were on my original switch for a new set because they were drifting okay gotcha gotcha so now i have the reverse set because i, I bought them separately yeah okay then that sucks Rip. the dream's dead that's what the I'm dream saying. is dead like yeah um from japan or something yeah, i think so. i heard that those are reversed and if that's the case, I'll just freaking do that, dude. Yeah. <laughs> or, which I never see. You can buy individuals some places, too. I think on Amazon, actually. Here, let's go find that's out. That's what I was about to say, that they have them individually. And also, they used to, at some point, they sold them, like, double blue and double red. But I never see that either. Yeah, I haven't seen that in a while, either. I've um, literally never seen it. <laughs> like, not even blue one time. Con. I'm looking on Amazon right now um okay yeah so like you can buy it's 50 bucks instead of i mean still that's cheaper than buying a whole double set uh for 70 or 80 depending on if it's on sale or not but on amazon they've got genuine nintendo switch joy con wireless controller neon blue right which is the one that you would need i think and then i need i'm gonna have one i'm gonna have one and a half sets of joy con <laughs> yep <sighs> good old blue all right more comments and questions. Uh, Lord Commander Grimhain, single player or multiplayer? Only did one can exist. The, did you hear the reasoning for this name? Oh, no, not at all. I'm very I, so, curious. so I was like, yeah, I was talking about them in the supporters chat mm -hmm. um, about this. And I was like, yeah, I, I, like me and Parker were just completely unaware why your name, like you, you just went up in rank because yeah. I modded him <laughs> in the Discord. And I was like, somebody was like, Lord Command, like mod Lord Commander Grimhain or something. Uh -huh. like and I was like, by this time next year, your freaking uh, title is not going to fit in a tweet. <laughs> and he was talking about why it happened. It was something in the Wolf Den Discord. Oh, interesting. Um, but I don't, I don't remember the context for that. So <sighs> he's maybe cheating we'll, on us. Maybe we'll say on the. I mean, I, no, technically, I mean, technically, he's here because I was on Bob's channel doing something. It's true. Yeah. So he's cheating on them. I mean, yeah, but he likes me more, I, so it's fine. Oh, nice. It's fine. But he likes Dan more than me. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> he does, man. Grimhain loves Dan. I'm so, so excited time, that Dan's going to be a PAX. Every time Dan, I mean, like Grimhain sees a new person, it's recency bias. He's like, <laughs> he's like, man, AJ is way better than Bob. And then he sees Dan, he's like, man, Dan's way better than AJ. <laughs> I don't know because I'm the newest, and I, I don't true. think I could That's outrank true. Dan. That's true, but I think that, just saying, I think that it doesn't matter because you're part of me, so uh, you got absorbed <laughs> into his I'm like, and hey, he's old news of you. Yes. <laughs> one of us um <laughs> but yeah i'm super stoked that dan's gonna be at pax yo it's all. gonna be late yep do we we should figure out more details about that at some point um, um i think we did but i don't know oh. I, uh, i'll talk i'll talk to you about what me and dan talked about brilliant um so yes the question as it were uh single player or multiplayer only one can exist. However, any multiplayer with single player characters would cease to exist along with the single player game. Um, so, so you're saying like components, I assume is what he means. Oh, gotcha. I'm curious. Those single player components would cease to exist. 
Okay, yeah, because you said characters, but yeah, if it means component, so like World of Light, so like would Pokemon, also- there's no multiplayer, or there's no say the either one. Yeah, I guess it depends on how you define it. Because uh, I, I, I would say. Um, Pokemon's a single player game for me and it's a multiplayer game for you. <laughs> right. But I would say that just like just based on even though like yeah, it would be it would define how your experience uh-huh. is with it. I think maxed out potential, Pokemon's more of a multiplayer game than it is a single player. Right, game. yeah. Long term um, total everything. Because the yeah. single player is kind of like Splatoon, where yeah. the single player is there to build up to the multiplayer. It's just that. <laughs> Some people, they're like, all right, I had enough. <laughs> you know, the, the, the 30 hour tutorial is why I am here. <laughs> yep. I, I mean, this is a no brainer. I probably for both of us, definitely for me. Yeah, but player. opposite ends of it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like you're going to be multiplayer. I would say, I would say 97%. I'm going to single player. What about like, I don't know if you had to put a percentage on it. Cause I'd imagine you're not a hundred percent multiplayer. The thing is I play everything. Yeah. Like I, I think that in that regard, I'm more balanced where it's like, I oh, play a lot yeah. of a, a multiplayer game and a lot of a single player game. Yeah. And I play a lot more genres overall. Mm-hmm. Um, but I enjoy the multiplayer experience more because uh, I don't know. It's just more of a, re- like if all games were single player, I don't mm-hmm. think I would touch any game. <laughs> as long you know like yeah, i would right. play i would play through the initial thing and put my 200 hours in the breath of the wild or whatever yeah. right but then i would just be done and not yeah. play anything for four months whereas with smash brothers right even if there's like a single player game that i'll try and then maybe i'll put six hours into it and i'm like yeah, mm-hmm. i don't really like it this much i'm done i'm yep. still going to play smash brothers another 100 hours between when that game comes out i mean came out and the next game comes out mm-hmm. right so it's just like i get significantly more bang for my buck on, like in sheer playtime and also in like shared experiences because yeah, then right. i'm playing it with people that i like you know that i'm around the irl mm-hmm. also with people like falcon or people in the discord right like that doesn't happen with single player games we're not mm-hmm. just like i mean we might if that if that was an option where i mean if that was the only option where it's like all right everybody we're going to do a discord call and we're all going to play breath of the wild and then every once in a while somebody's like yo i found a line on like, oh shoot that's crazy but it's not yeah. the same as all playing a multiplayer game yeah right sharing that you know so yeah i'm True. definitely multiplayer for that reason yep. and i'm definitely single player so i'm glad good job team uh cereal or still grim hain cereal mm-hmm. or eggs for breakfast hashtag fanatics foods cereal i don't eggs. even like eggs dude you're I don't crazy even like them. i don't even like them i like cereal fine uh but like I also, I don't eat breakfast that often. Same. Um, I never eat breakfast. And so Literally if I'm going to eat breakfast, like I'd like it to be eggs and bacon and sausage kinds of, you know, like a fun, like, ah, we're doing breakfast, you know. See, this Whereas, is the thing. This is the thing. I like breakfast because mm-hmm. I like like freaking waffles, dude. Waffles are great. Waffles are great. I like sausage. I'm not a fan of great. bacon. I don't like eggs. Yeah, that's, eggs I are great. I don't like freaking, what, what else is breakfast? Food? I don't like grits. I'm not a big, I'm really, yeah, I'm not from the South really. So yeah, the grits are not great. Not a huge grits guy. I'm okay with them now. Like I've had them enough times that I'm like, put it on a shirt. Grits are not great. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I'm like, any food that's half. described by its texture is probably not. Gonna, <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not doing the best. Well, I don't know what, like peanut butter. Is that like described? Does that, I don't know. I'm not I mean, sure. Here was, oh, uh, very random, but apparently it was National Peanut Butter Day last Friday. And so one of my coworkers oh my God. sends us shower thoughts, um, like a list of five every Friday. Mm-hmm. And one of them, I, I was like, my mind was kind of blown a little bit, was that peanut, okay, um, what is it? What, is a so, peanut butter, crunchy peanut butter snack? No. Oh, maybe no. I, did I say this on the podcast? Like, yeah, I think I said this on the podcast. Like, no, so you didn't. That's okay. why I was, that's why I'm no. like, oh, what? That's, so it's, um, you were talking about it on the podcast. I know. <laughs> How did I not think of this then? Is that syrup is, stop me if I said this, because I no, felt you like not. I must have. Syrup is sticky to the touch, but smooth to the mouth. Peanut butter is smooth to the touch, but sticky to the mouth. That's true. That's a good point. Crazy. <laughs> I feel like it has all to do with moisture. I don't know. <laughs> but it's, it's just, I was like, wow, that's a good old time. All right, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Still Grim Haines question. Um, I don't know, dude. I don't want to. Like, I, I, like, I feel like answering this question is judgmental. 
uh, yeah, depends, I guess, what stance you take on various things. If we're going, I don't know. It's, yeah. <laughs> okay, you know? I feel uh, like either one could lead to the other, you know? That's, like, I think you mm-hmm. could believe in whatever you want and believe either one. I, I honestly think so, too. I mean, like, I, but I, I mean, feel like one or the other is suggestive of believing in one thing or not. That's true. I mean, everybody here knows, like, I talk about going to church and stuff Uh like that. And so even within that, like, I still, I know that within just my church, we have pretty different views of, like, how the universe began and all that kind of thing. The egg. Yeah, right. into the chicken. So I'm, (laughs) like, I, just to get even, yeah, I'm not, I don't subscribe specifically to, like, seven day creation kind of a thing this is yeah. getting more religious uh, than this podcast yeah, has ever mm-hmm. gotten mm-hmm. but i'm also very fine with it and that kind of thing so i'm like yeah. i don't i don't really even care that's, See, that's not- where I'm, I'm just like live and let live do, do what you want to do <laughs> that's yeah so and i've got much more you know theological reasons for thinking any of this stuff that i'm going to bother talking about on here but like mm. who's to say is the real question um, exactly so there you go. I don't like <laughs> eggs. So I, my head can is that the chicken came first. <laughs> there you go. Good times. Uh, Long Chris asks, least favorite Smash DLC character? Uh, okay. Prana Plant? Um, see, there's, there's... Actually, no. I would say I've played zero of them besides Prana Plant, but I'd say Terry. Um, how dare you? I, I mean, actually, I don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. but uh, that's specifically more, more about accurately, you not yes. uh, about you not caring about Terry. I don't. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> like it's yeah. whatever, dude. Yeah. Because I don't particularly care about Terry as a character. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't particularly care about any of them except for uh, Banjo as a character. Um, true. And even he is like, I mean, he's bare. He's cool. You know, yep. he slams his bird friend face down on the ground. That's great. Rude. Um, but I mean, she seems fine with it. You know, she, she does seem fine with that. I don't know if that's good or not. She wants to participate. Are you judging her? I don't know. I was judging. I'm just, I don't want her to be accepting of being in, you know, an abusive, an abusive relationship. relationship if that's what it is. <laughs> so hopefully that's not the case. I can't place any judgments Sounds on the like situation. Sounds like shame in the But anyway. Uh, <laughs> I, think there's, uh, I, <laughs> I, think, I think there's a couple of layers of rationale for the answers to this question for me, where it's like true. the most annoying character for me for free is Piranha Plant. For mm. free. Definitely, yeah. because it's the easiest character to spam with, and that's just, and because of like just you know how approachable it is versus mm-hmm. playing with people locally. Uh, I just run into them a lot because they mm-hmm. work better online than they do offline, and it's just yep. like frustrating. Um, so on that on that end, proud to play it. Uh, as far as like characters go, mm-hmm. like like character strength, like who I would prefer to play as and stuff like that, Violet. Violet for free is mm-hmm. what well, we'll get to that with another. We will indeed. Um, all right, moving on. Questions. Here we go. Let's do it. Lord Commander Grimhane, how do you take your coffee? Not at all. <laughs> Somehow I knew <laughs> with no coffee. <laughs> I take it with milk and none coffee. <laughs> There you go. Um, for with a hot black cocoa in it with tea. There you go. Uh, I take my in black usually um, because yeah. I okay. Long story short, I didn't start drinking coffee until last uh, no two summers ago or so when yeah it was like just real cold in my office and I wanted to drink and like tea didn't warm me up but coffee did and i was like i don't want to be drinking i don't want to be putting like milk and sugar and stuff like that in it so i'm just going to figure it out and i'm just going to like it black and then i did and then it was fine it was cold in my office cuz ac's on cuz it's that's i feel like that's why most people like stuff like that like 100% freaking, like, is you just get over it at some you know, point you're like, like oh yeah it's like good coffee now coffee <laughs> and alcohol and stuff Beer, like that. a lot yeah. of times it's like you start consuming that for either out of necessity mm-hmm. like i'm tired all the time dude i need to wake up i'm going to drink coffee and then you you just eventually trick your brain into being like i like this that's i mean that's how i started drinking fizzy water was i was over somebody's <laughs> house they were like would you like some water and i was like sure i was like 12 or something and they poured me some fizzy water and i was like I'm not going to not drink this. So I'm here it goes. I'm about to start liking it. 
See, and that's that's another there you go. Uh, that's another reason why you know where the whole like freaking polar opposite thing, but it yeah. works. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm I had that first experience where I'm like I don't like this, and I'm like I don't like this, and I'm done. <laughs> and, you know, like I'll try whatever the yeah. first time. But after that, if I don't like it, sorry about it, dude. Yep. Give me like another 15 years. Maybe that's I'll how like I feel. Then. Yeah. Like I don't, I drink very little beer, but like there's some beers I'm fine with and like IPAs, IPAs are just kind of gross to me. And, <laughs> but I've tried them enough now that I'm like, I could see how I could like this if I tried some more, but if I, I just, tried to like this, I just don't, this, I'm not going to so, get around to it. That's you know? just like so far from how I go about life. It's I, like honestly, me I too, like yes. something or I don't. I'm just like, all right, this is great. And I like it. Or it's mm-hmm. like, ah, this isn't, I don't like this. <laughs> and why try to like something that I don't want to like, you know, or that I don't like. Yeah. Which is the thing that I don't want to like. True. Uh, speaking of liking things, uh, his next question is about something we like a whole lot. <laughs> Friendly reminder that since this is the 99th episode, why didn't you week- remind me before I said anything about what number of episode this is? I mean, technically he did because this was written in the past. This but is true. Why didn't you freaking project into my mind <laughs> that it wasn't um, 98? <laughs> yeah, when I was introducing the podcast. Uh, I blame Jeremy. <laughs> So, friendly reminder that since this is the 99th episode, next week is the 100th, which means Dan, which means yeah. please don't forget to message him because that Already boy did. is always busy. Already did. Did you say anything? I did it. Yep. And he said he's down. And then he said, what time? And I said, this time. And he said, okay. Nice. So, there it is. Yeah. We're good. Unless Game Theory yeah. throws a wrench, yeah. you know? Unless Matt Pat wants to start a directly to you competitor <laughs> and he's like i'm gonna use everything in my power to take every possible advantage they have in life so i'm taking dan and also using my millions upon millions of subscribers to make them even more relevant he's gonna make a podcast called directly with you and then make a whole bunch more with just various prepositions in the place of two directly alongside you direct directly away from <laughs> directly without you that one's going to be depressing. Yes. Uh, Mega Man said, will AJ now retire due to losing the best Smash, due to losing to the best Smash player in the world, Mega Man 87 himself? Okay. So I was playing Smash Brothers because I- Does Mega Man play as Mega Man also? I need to know. Oh, uh, turns <laughs> out. Turns out. So I was playing Smash Brothers with Mega Man and uh-huh. also Val and Grimhane mm-hmm. was in the spectator scene. Nice. Um, and I just got to, well, I just don't feel right playing Pokemon trainer. If I'm playing against people that aren't as good as me or within the <laughs> like, realm of possibility, cause it's yeah. just not fun for anybody. Yeah. So it just got to a point where I was like, all right, who do you want me to play as a good game? <laughs> and Grimhane would be like, play as this person. Cause I heard this character is bad. So <laughs> that should be fair. Um, so like, I think the first time he beat me, I was Byla. Which okay. We'll get to. <laughs> we'll get to Byleth. Uh, but yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Um, and then the second time he beat me, I think I was Simon. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was the that was the character, another character that Grimham mm-hmm. was like, Well, you're probably not gonna be good with this person. <laughs> and then I lost the first match, and then I came back and three stocked him with Simon. Nah. So there's that. <laughs> Uh, and then another one of those that Grimane was like, pick this character and it's Game and & Watch. And Game & Watch is toxic, dude. So I was like, okay. <laughs> it's like, all right. Um, so I just showed, I showed Mega Man why mm-hmm. uh, he should never want to fight Game & Watch because he's go. a cheap character and they need to take him out of the game. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that happened. Uh, but also Mega Man was like, yeah, I don't, I don't really play Smash Brothers. It's weird for me to like, play more than once in, in mm-hmm. a week or something like that. So there's that. Well, also, but he beat you, so he's way, That's way true. better than you. That's true. But also, the next comment, which is so sorry, TA says, uh, why specifically is Byleth OP? I'll get my answer someday. Uh, he's been asking this for the past couple of days. Yep. And, um, and this is the day. I, I don't know. I'm not creative. January enough. 30th. I'm not creative enough to lie to you like that <laughs> to, to try to describe a reason why the, the worst character in the game. No, it's not worst character in the game, but the worst DLC that we've ever gotten in any Smash Brothers game, which means this one in Smash 4, uh, is OP in any way. You really Violet think is, it's that? Violet is very that? not good. Mm, interesting. I mean, I heard like, what you said on the Wolf Den as far as like, good against casuals terrible against high tier right. sort of uh which I mean, when short. i say yeah 
when I say good against casuals, that's any character in the game, man. That's true. <laughs> uh, literally any character, if you know, okay, this is what this character wants to do in a bet in a best case scenario, mm-hmm. and you're fighting somebody that doesn't know that, then oh, you could yeah, just do right. your stuff and they lose. Yeah. But, I guess I mean more like casual versus casual, like right. having stuff like Falcon Punch or um, yeah. or like the the axe thing mm-hmm. whatever they call that and stuff those kinds of things are ones where it's like whoa this character is so strong because yeah, it can because do something that, that punishes people, things and you're gonna right. put yourself in situations that are people get see punched. stuff like oh he's charging a smash attack if that hits me i'm gonna like, or, or whatever right yeah. i'm gonna hold my shield mm-hmm. that's the solution uh and then your shield gets broken uh-huh. so in that regard i guess bylas op but i don't mm-hmm. even know if bylas is fast enough for that to even be a thing mm-hmm. um so it's just like I can tell you why Byleth is underpowered <laughs> and it's entirely because Byleth is very slow and mm-hmm. all their moves are obvious. Yeah. Um, so like even the kill options that you have, it's like, oh, they're charging an arrow, a better mm-hmm. block. Oh, they already charged. They're up into the next thing. A better spot dodge or a better drop shield and mm-hmm. jump, you know, like, mm-hmm. oh, they're pressing down B. I better grab them. You know, like everything that they do is so slow that you can just look at the animation and be like, well, I need to do X, and then I'm, mm-hmm. I'm get away scot-free. Specifically, Pokemon Trainer destroys Byleth, <laughs> Like, it is so free. Like, the only time that it's even a little mm-hmm. bit threatening is when you're Charizard, because yeah. Byleth... Slow and slow. Not slow and slow, but slow and gigantic. So, right. like, even if I try to run away, I'm mm-hmm. so big that I'm yeah. probably going to get hit anyway. <laughs> True. Um, so... That's, that's really the only like, mm-hmm. advantage that Byleth has in that uh, match. Let me tell you, though, why Byleth is OP. It's because there's this series called Fire Emblem. And uh, uh, there's uh, a lot of characters. And with more characters. of origin. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of characters that they join forces together. And, re- you know, it's like, um, like tag team stuff where because there's so many of them, each one of them gets power buffs for reasons so sports that's why moving on sure <laughs> it's just like so yeah Byleth not great that. <laughs> i haven't played uh Byleth i guess is, i might try fun, my tonight to be but Byleth is not good i which i mean in my opinion yeah like that's I, yeah i agree i completely agree you know? i wouldn't tell people not to buy violet i wouldn't yeah. say that i would say like if you like smash brothers or you like playing mm-hmm. it in any regard other than like if the only reason why you buy dlc characters is because you want to become the next mk leo and the right. character you're playing with is not clicking for you mm-hmm. don't buy violet <laughs> but if you're literally anybody else else violet is fun to play yeah and so there you go they at least got that going for them but indeed yeah. Unless, yep. unless you're playing against somebody that's significantly better than you, and they mm-hmm. don't, they they just don't oh, yeah. let up, dude. Because like, there's times where, again, like I'm playing against people that are worse than me, mm-hmm. but I'll handicap myself because it's just mm-hmm. not fun <laughs> to mm-hmm. like go like all out on somebody that's not good. So I'll do stuff that's like, oh, I'll play characters uh-huh. I spent three minutes playing in one Smash Brothers game two installments ago. Or whatever. Yeah. Um, Speaking of, care, speaking of playing people that are way better than you, though, John Francis asks on Twitter, <laughs> on Twitter, AJ versus Parker, Smash Bros, winner? It's, here's the thing, guys. Mm-hmm. We, all, we all know that I would win <laughs> just like a lot. Uh-huh. And AJ, uh, he's that's asked why Parker, off air a lot. Why. He said, hey, I know we're going to talk a lot of smack, <laughs> but like, we're not going to do this. We're, I don't want to be embarrassed like that. I've set my standards where I am <laughs> in this whole you know, uh, hierarchy and things. And like, I just don't want people to know. Right. So, um, but now you all know, don't tell anyone obviously, but um, yeah. That's what Parker's doing when he doesn't play any games with me. He's doing what I said about <laughs> handicapping himself. Cause like, he's just so good <laughs> that he, there is no character that he doesn't yeah. know how to play. Oh, exactly. Know? Yeah. I, I just couldn't turn it off. I go into a trance and just right. like, you know, I mean, you wouldn't even understand the a kinds trance. of things that I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just, in, I'm just in a trials, going crazy. <laughs> I don't even know what that was. Yeah. <laughs> that was your trance. That's it how you was. Talk. You oh, didn't know so that that's how you talk when, you, when you're like in the zone, dude. Um, so that? hopefully, hopefully that answers your question, John Francis. Um, and you're not too intimidated now right. by by all this. Uh, and last but not least, fun one to end on that I don't know if we're going to be able to live up to the expectations of this question, <laughs> but whatever. Make a re. 
really crazy prediction in regards to a new game that Nintendo could make go really crazy, like something so far out of left field that only Nintendo would try it just because, you know, Nintendo's crazy. Okay. Um, so picture this. It's a freaking um, real-time strategy farming simulator starring Master Hand from Super Smash Brothers. Um, and you, mm-hmm. you you freaking plant Pikmin into the ground, mm-hmm. and you once they grow into full-grown Pikmin, you breed them because <laughs> somehow they grow from the ground and also have babies. True. And then that's how you upgrade them. That's how they evolve, right? So mm-hmm. they grow out of the ground, and then they have babies, and that makes a better version of the Pikmin. Oh, you're so right. right. And the tricky thing about it is it's at 300 times real-life speed. Yes. So, like... blades of grass growing it's not like you know watching the grass grow isn't just like a slow activity like yeah like you don't don't cut this grass you're not going to be able to see the game like that's how fast like you had to immediately at all times throughout this entire game you gotta have your other crazy hand Mm -hmm. you gotta cut the grass the whole time that you do literally anything also it it keeps going it's like you know some of those other games that are still going offline and stuff like that uh um so I mean, if like if, if you, you stop ever playing, stop it playing all. this game, yeah, if you turn the game off, you, you just take it back to the store. The only way to do you're it never is going to be able to cut the rest of this grass. Yeah, so. the game it's called uh, it's called Grass Gone Wild, <laughs> uh, Hand Hands of Fury, and it's it's only going to be a Twitch plays game because that's mm-hmm. the only way that it's going to happen. But yeah. instead, it's just going to be Crazy Hand just doing this because like everybody's given different. Yeah, different Crazy Hand is going to be like smacking stuff in the grass. <laughs> <laughs> this would be the worst experience of any lifetime. Yeah, but it'll be good because Nintendo made it. Like, I mean, duh, sixty dollars for was, life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And there you go. There you have it. Right. Grass gone wilds with create coming to a place Fury. near you. Gonna be announced in the January sixtieth Nintendo Direct. <laughs> I like how it gets further every time. <laughs> But that's it, guys. You asked some questions. You commented some comments. You newsed some news. And so did we. Mm-hmm. we Stick did. around. Be sure to do all the good things. Um, if you listened to this far on the podcast, what, what question do you want them to answer in the comments? AJ? Um, how often do you cut your grass? And yep. do, you, do you plan, is your sole purpose in life to solely cut your grass mm. when a local YouTuber is recording their video? <laughs> uh, somebody's your next door neighbor, so yes. <laughs> uh-huh. Right. Yep. Also, robots versus unicorns. Let us know your thoughts. Robot unicorns, though. What about those? Do they, whose camp are they in? <laughs> That's for them to know and us to find out, AJ. What a privilege we get to have. Okay. With that, we're out. See you guys later. Goodbye.